Hello, everybody. Welcome to Troubles in Otari, a Pathfinder beginner box adventure. I'm your host and GM, Jim Rodehaver, Jim Jam, James, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's specifics don't matter. But we're here to explore the Pathfinder role playing system using the newly released Pathfinder beginner box, which is available right now on Paizo.com. The soon to be epic heroes in this adventure are played by the already definitely heroes here with me. We've got. Can we see everybody yet? Bring them up. Where are our heroes? Let us see, and then I will say their names. Yes, we have Katie Wilson with us. It's Xander Genre, Gabe Hicks, and Michelle Wynn Bradley. You know them and love them from last week. Unless you missed last week, in which case you need to go to YouTube and check out the VOD uh, because we are posting them up there as well. But don't do that just yet. Stick with us. It's going to be a good time. Uh, it's the beginner box. It's all very simple, so it's easy to dive in, even if you missed that first episode. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? I don't want to be the only one talking. How's, how how y'all feeling? How you doing? It's the uh, night before Thanksgiving. Is anybody yeah. having any, any plans? I know things are different this year, but mm. I don't know what things look like. We are I making mean, the exact same size turkey that we always do every year, and it's a it's a blessing. To be, I'm already planning leftover foods for it, and I don't care what happens to me or my body. This is happening. This is it. We're eating this thing ourselves. You have friends down the street who will gladly take some. Of oh food. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what a lot of ours are. It's community sharing of recipes or, you know, leftovers and things Aww. like that. So it's exciting. But socially distanced with masks and yeah. utmost precautions. <laughs> Very cool. Very I started cool. decorating for Christmas. Oh. So that's where I'm at <laughs> mentally and physically. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Gabe? What are you, what are you up to this uh, Thanksgiving? I live in the woods, so like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing with nobody. That's I'm right. gonna just chill and eat <laughs> sit on my porch. That's uh, yeah, great. Gabe, you're living in the woods. Your internet's like really good. Yeah. <laughs> Don't That's say that. To have. Don't oh, say that. Oh, no. There have been there have been moments, and it <laughs> drives me up the wall. Yeah, okay, like I, okay. Honestly, I'll probably just I might I might video call some of my family, uh, but I'm probably gonna sit on the porch. Um, with some sweet potatoes, mm. some turkey, some wine, and read a book. <laughs> like, Aww. Yeah. Hit it. Oh, that sounds, that sounds like a vacation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 That is fantastic. Right, you well, Jim Jam. Yeah. Me, uh, Evil stuff. Basically <laughs> another day for me. Uh, not a lot is going to go on tomorrow. I don't have to go to work, so that's one thing. Uh, but otherwise, it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty simple. Um, my wife's out of town. She's a flight attendant, so she's she's uh, out in the sky right now. So uh, we, I won't be able to see her. And my family lives in Ohio, and I'm in California. So I'll video call with them. But that's gonna be about it. Uh, maybe if I had a porch, I would sit on it. I don't have a porch, <laughs> but I will maybe sit with a glass of wine, some sweet potatoes, and turkey, and just go the Gabe route because that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> patio. You have a patio. <laughs> that's true. We do have the patio. Maybe I'll try that. Out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, also, maybe starting decorating for Christmas. That also sounds mm. good. I love Christmas. Yes. I'm happy about that. Uh, get into it. We're not here to talk about holidays. <laughs> we're, here, we're here to play Pathfinder, right? Yeah. So how Hopefully about we go ahead and do that? Let's get into it. <sighs> Some days passed. In the dark, wet tunnels beneath Otari, Skibble Stick the Cobalt very carefully, very quietly, tiptoes through the corridors. She is alone on a very important mission, to find treasure and to find food. They're going to need quite a lot of that in the coming days. She sees a flickering blue light ahead and stops dead in her tracks, ears straining for any sign of danger. But aside from that eerie blue light, there is nothing. She slowly starts forward until she turns the corner and sees a burial chamber. There is a stone sarcophagus illuminated by this eternal blue flame. She waits and she watches she tosses a stone into the room to see if anything will happen, but nothing does. And so finally, she gently tiptoes her way to the stone sarcophagus. It's a little bit of a strain, but she puts her back into it and shifts the heavy stone lid aside. The blue light reflects off, of a shi off the shining metal of a beautiful sword, an emerald embedded in its hilt, a wonderful prize. Next to that is a shield molded in the shape of a stern lion. All of that on top of a moldy old corpse. She snatches up the sword, holding it up to admire the gem in the pommel. But as, she, uh, but as she does, there is a breath of chill air that swirls through the old crypt. Skibblestick feels her heart skip a beat. She looks down to the moldy corpse, half expecting it to move. But of course, it's just a dead body. Still, 
She feels like maybe it's time to go. She's loath to leave the shield, but she can't quite bring herself to reach that trembling hand back into the sarcophagus. Instead, she pulls the stone lid back over the body and runs back down into the darkness. She'll have to tell the others to block up the tunnel, just in case. When she feels like she's gotten a safe distance away, she runs her fingers over the cold metal of her prize. Things are looking up for old Skibblestick. She has already decided that this sword is her good luck charm and will lead her to great things. In the present, Skibblestick is the desiccated remains of a giant spider's meal, and her lucky charm has made its way back home in the hands of one Waverly Kent, who stands over the very sarcophagus from which it was taken. But the corpse St Skibblestick left behind is no longer lying still. It is reaching up for Waverly's throat as nearby several skeletal figures begin to pull themselves from their resting places to advance on her friends with deadly intent. Outnumbered by the dead, the living must fight for their lives. Let's start off with initiative. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> That's Poor really Skibble. sad. Yeah. Poor Skibblestick, you know? Poor Skibblestick. I do have to say I got two new sets of dice, and this is my first Ooh. time rolling them. We'll see what happens. Ooh, I got a natural 20 on initiative. I got a Hey. Ooh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a 10 total. Insult. Okay, those new dice are going in the back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Brand new, fresh oh, out of the box. Dang. You got a 10. That's so good. I got a dirty 20. Right. That's an 8. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? An eight. <laughs> eight. Okie dokie. You know, but you know what? That's what the road gets for not going to the room first. I already knew it was going to end badly. I'm in the back. <laughs> that's true. Uh, sorry, uh, Inga, can you remind me what your initiative was? Yes, it's. I got a natural 20. Uh, so, where is initiative? Under... Uh, it's perception. Oh, it's perception. Uh, so, 24. Yep. 24. All right. Ingot, you see all this happen. You react yeah. the quickest. You see, oh, no. You guys were all so tense waiting to see if one of these these corpses was going to move. And sure enough, it does. It's reaching up even now for Waverly, who seems frozen in fear. Mm. You have a moment to react before she's grabbed. What do you do? Oh, gosh. Okay, so uh, I would like to make a quick check to see if I know anything about like the undead or or what they could potentially be. Yeah, you can uh, you can definitely use a recall knowledge. Uh, this would be oh, a religion yeah. check. Okay. I'll do it. All right. That would be one action, right? Yes, one action. Ooh, okay. So, uh, 13? 13, uh, certainly. Uh, the only thing that I should have had you specify before, but you've mm. got, it looks like some skeletons. Mm -hmm. And a zombie. Which which of those two would you like to try to to recall some knowledge about? Which one is currently attacking Waverly? That would be this this zombie, zombified corpse. Zombie then. All right. So what you know about zombies? Uh, that's enough. It's enough for one useful piece of information, and I will <laughs> tell you uh, that they are particularly easy to kill if you use slashing weapons. Uh huh. In this case, they have what is called a weakness. A weakness is, uh, is always accompanied by a value, and a creature who is subject to damage of a type they are weak against takes extra damage equal to the value. Uh, in this case, I'll, I'll go ahead and re pull the curtain back a little further for you. Mm. Uh, they are they are they're, they're, the 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 full of it is they have weakness to slashing damage, and the value is five. So they take five extra points of damage anytime they take any slashing damage. Got it. Okay, so on the second, well, let's see. Ingot is still pretty far away from the actual pedestal itself that Waverly's on. You all did curiously decide that you were going to let her go <laughs> all the way by herself. Uh, Crystal is sort of nearby. I have eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, the other, so uh, Ingot is actually closer to one of the skeletons that is um, like on the right hand side of, of where he's looking. Sure. So he's going to turn uh, and ready one of his crystals. And as uh. he does, he's going to cast acid splash on this um, skeleton, but nice. he's going to shout at Waverly, Ingot thinks you should slash at it. And then splash. 
All right, acid splash. Is that a spell attack or a save? Let me see. You splash a glob of acid that splatters on one creature within 30 feet. Make a spell attack roll against the target's AC. Okay, so, so go ahead and roll that for me. It is, uh-oh, does a 12 hit? A 12 against the skeleton. Please. Is not quite going to do it. Uh, uh, you, you're, you're, this gob of acid actually like splatters through its empty rib cage uh, oh. and, and connects with the wall on the other side of it. No, I'm damaging, Ingot is damaging the rock. <laughs> the the you poor love stone. rocks, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Must hurt. Hmm. Uh, I believe that was a two action spell, was it not? It is. All right, so that takes us through your turn into Gristle's. Gristle, you see Waverly is under attack. Uh, Ingot casts a spell real quick, doesn't quite connect. You're left with your own reactions. What do you do? I'd like to uh, stride over to the uh, ghoul <laughs> that is attacking uh, Beverly slash Waverly, uh, if I could do so. And then All right. I will attempt to use my last two actions to do a power attack, but let's see All how right. this, this shakes out. All right, using two actions for one mighty swing. You. Well, that's cool. Uh, that's a 12 to hit. How's that going? Uh, <laughs> We're doing great. A 12, well, on this, these creatures are are not very quick. Uh, zombies are are slow and easy to hit, and a twelve actually will do it. That is. Oh, that's final. awesome! Yes. <laughs> Still using character voice when it's just Michelle. Um, <laughs> I will save you in turn, and then I will get a slashy. Uh, and can you, can you remind me one more time. I do two d twelve, and then I just add the three. The modifier that's bonus. correct. Yes. So okay. power attack. You use two actions, but you deal one extra die of damage on a hit. Okay, so that's, uh, I rolled two sevens, that's 14 plus three is 15, 16, 17. 17 points of damage, and as I had mentioned, these guys are weak against slashing damage, <clears throat> so you deal an additional five points from its weakness, uh, making your total amount of damage a 22. Yes. Huge swing, you wow. come in uh, and just, uh, you, you <laughs> this creature is like reaching up for Waverly slash Beverly, you manage to come in, you cut its arm off at the elbow and carry through into its neck, slicing through completely, severing its head, which goes rolling across the room under one of the coffins on the north end of the room. And the the, the moldy old body just slumps back down. I uh, gestured it to Waverly. <laughs> Oh, hey, Beverly, do you think I should have yelled heads up before I did that? Or, I mean, it feels like I wasn't sure it was going to hit, so I should, uh... Remind me <laughs> next time. Put it in your notes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, well, there goes the zombie. Uh, so that's <laughs> dead. Uh, but luckily, I've got some skeletons that oh. uh, they will take their first actions to actually pull themselves out of their coffins. Uh, because they are they are just now sitting up. They, they all stand up, all four of them. Two of them go rushing up towards the sarcophagus where uh, Waverly and Gristle are standing. One of them is going to uh, try to slash at Waverly with its claw, bony fingers, uh, and rolls a natural one on that yeah. attack. So it just f like stumbles over the head, the, the falling head <laughs> of the zombie, and completely whiffs. It's very, if if, zo if skeletons could be embarrassed, it won't be red. Um, he'll try to redeem himself with a third action, uh, second strike against Waverly, that one hitting an armor class of 14. You meet and that's all I need to do. So it, it manages to uh, almost pretending, maybe pretending, like like when you almost trip and you just keep going, you catch yourself, but you keep going like nothing happened. Wait, that uh, skeleton just, just Willy does anybody, Wonka. Does anybody remember if I raised my shield? Oh what? yeah. Well, did you I? had you were you had oh. the, the last thing you did was you were you had opened the sarcophagus to uh, put the sword back, so you could not possibly have your shield raised at this. You point. are right. Fair and just, Jim Jam. So the claw comes in, catches you across the shoulder as you're turning around, and digs deep beneath the armor. You take three points. Ah. 
slashing damage from its clawed hand. That's all I can do. That was its third action. The other one is right next to Gristle, and it is going to claw, claw at her, flailing wildly. It's deep, empty black eye sockets, just full of void and hatred. Uh, but with a two on the die, it also <laughs> has an embarrassing, an embarrassingly low result and doesn't hit. Uh, its third and final attack, or its second attack, but the third action is going to hit armor class 15 against Gristle. I have an 18, son. Nope. On that. That's not going to do it. Uh, it's just scrabbling against your armor. Cannot penetrate your mighty gleaming fortress that you have put yourself in. Uh, I'll be very angry if I was scratched. <laughs> there are two other skeletons. Uh, they use one action to pull themselves up. They then both stride across the room to try to get to Ingot, oh, who no. is standing there at the entrance of the tunnel. They will basically come in converging on him claws outstretched. Uh, the first one is going to hit it in armor class of 10, which I don't think will get to. No. <laughs> the next one, though, would hit a 24. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. The important question, is it 10 above your armor class? It is. I have a 14. Oh, no. That would make this a critical hit. Yikes. So it comes in. The first one tries to slash at you. You duck under its claw, and as you're coming up, the other one does almost this uppercut swing and catches you just under the chin. Ugh. It's bony fingers ripping up through your lip. Oh, and God, Jim Jam. <laughs> that is going to be 10 points of slashing damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ouch. S spicy. <laughs> yeah. Blood Thank flies, but that is the end of its turn, luckily. And that takes us to Waverly. Um, the skeleton that just tried to hit me, how many feet away do you think he is from me? Right well, up? if he just tried to hit you, he would be right up on you. Cool. Um, I would like to first look down into the sarcophagus. Can I notice inside if there's a spot for that sword or not? Do you want to use an action to make a seek check? <laughs> okay, sure. Make a perception check. Cool. Ooh, okay, uh, that's going to be a uh, 23. 23. You are looking around. You could see that uh, at first there was this shield that was sort of like lying on the corpse. Uh, and there would have been like its other hand looked like it would have been poised to be holding the sword. But now the, the creature, the zombie is completely destroyed. Um, it, there's no like slot for the sword it just looks like that zombie would have been holding it perhaps when it was lying in state okay uh so then with my uh last two actions i'm going to cast disrupt undead onto oh. the guy right in front of me um, oh <laughs> yes and you will get a basic fortitude save basic fortitude save oh the skeleton it's probably in a lot of trouble. Disrupt Undead sounds real bad for skeletons. It's probably real nasty. That is a 16 fortitude save. Um, you pass. So for okay. half, for half, that's going to be seven points of damage. Ooh. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, despite my successful, uh, was that the total damage or did you already have it for me? I did not half it for you. Okay, so the total, so yeah, you basically reach out a, a a flaming hand, placing it on the skeleton. This holy energy of from Saren Ray flows through you into this creature, and it starts to literally break apart, its bones crumbling into dust, and that's exactly what happens. Uh, the, the bones just sort of lose cohesion. Uh, they all clamber to the ground in a, in a, in a heap, it's got it. It's dead. You oh. destroyed it. Huzzah! Was that a two-action spell? Indeed. All right. So that takes us to the next person in line, and it's Thee. Yes. Uh, am I able? So I'm unable to move past the uh, skeletons that are basically blocking in ingot, correct? Uh, that is not necessarily true. Okay. 
that does look like you could move past uh, because you can move through ingot square. Mm -hmm. um, now, normally there would be a check you would have to make to move through enemy, enemy spaces, mm -hmm. but it does look like you could just sort of uh, ease your way around the corner if you wanted to. Uh, there, there is a space you could step into. You could just move, uh, move cool. through there. I'd like so I'd like to do that. I want to reach a flanking position with one of these skeletons. Yeah, All ingot. right. So if you want to reach a flanking position, uh, you could easily do that. You would just step directly around the skeleton and get so that it's basically caught between you and your companion. All right. All right. I'm gonna spend uh, one. The action only to do that. the only particular Good. trick is that um, Ingot does not have a melee weapon in his hand, so he's not really threatening the skeletons. Uh, oh. So you get a flanking bonus this round, unfortunately. Okay. Ink gets ruined for you. No, <laughs> I'm threatening. <laughs> okay. Well, could okay, yeah, sure. Uh, then I'll make uh my first melee attack. Okay. What weapon are you using? A uh, dagger. Dagger. All right. So that is a seventeen. Seventeen is a hit. All right. Dagger so that down, you connect with solid bone. Uh, six piercing damage. Six points of piercing damage. Okay, so you just, like, stab this knife into the back of this creature's skull, and you actually punch through the bone. Ooh. And as you pull the dagger back out, flecks of bone go flying everywhere, and the skeleton just collapses in front of you. You All briefly right. saw Ingot through the bone. <laughs> uh, and with with another action... I'd actually like to throw the dagger at the other one. Cool. A bold move. I approve. Go ahead and make a ranged attack roll with your dagger. All right. Oh, that's actually much better. And the second attack you said is a minus five, right? Normally it would be a minus five. Daggers are agile, allowing you to make it at a minus four penalty. Got it. Okay. So roll to 17, minus four is 13, plus my seven would be a dirty 20. 30, 20 is a hit. All right. Dang the For seven piercing damage. Seven points of damage. Um, there was one thing that I forgot. I'm I'm uh, mature enough to admit when I made a mistake, especially when those mistakes benefit me. I forgot all about these skeletons' resistance. Uh, yep. Piercing. So when you do stab this skeleton in the back of the head, the knife does go in just a little bit. Uh, you puncture through some of the bone, but rather than crumbling into dust, the skeleton quickly recovers uh, oh. and is quite quite up and, and right where it was. It actually uh, it looks like it was about to fall over, and it gets right back up, uh, apparently resisting some of your damage. Much like we talked about weaknesses, resistances also come with a value, and creatures that have resistance to something like... Uh, piercing or slashing da slashing damage reduce the damage they take by this the, by the value so in this case uh, they have resistance of five you dealt seven points of damage mm -hmm. so that gets reduced down to two points of damage the oh, first skeleton gosh. is still up uh, and the second skeleton also takes some damage but not quite as much as you would have hoped but That's still fine. not nothing it's not nothing you break away some of the bones That'll take us to death is the end of round one, and we move up to Ingot's turn. You see that there are two skeletons uh, that are menacing you with their claws. They, One of them badly cut you. Uh, mm. but yeah, I like, have a new piercing yeah, in my right? lip. <laughs> Fee has, has dove into the action and is trying to, to create a distraction for you, perhaps to get away, to leave him behind as you run through the tunnels screaming. Ingot is here to fight, and Ingot draws a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, I don't know if Thi had moved, but this now does this activate the flanking bonuses? Now that you both are engaged in melee combat with this creature, you are indeed both flanking it. Flanking it means that that creature becomes flat-footed to you, which means its armor class is reduced by two. So if you attack the skeleton that is directly between you and Thi, It'll, it'll have that uh, penalty. If you attack the other skeleton, it will not have that penalty. You're only flanking the one skeleton. Copy that. Ooh, yes. Okay. 18 plus my dagger is four. So a 22 to attack. No, 22 does it. That is a, a solid hit. <laughs> but it's not very strong. <laughs> <laughs> Let me grab this. One day you'll be strong like me, little one. 
three points of slashing damage. Three points of slashing damage. So you basically just like slap your dagger against this thing's rib cage. <laughs> yeah. As it slides down the bones, there's like the little xylophone. The xylophone. Yeah. Drill, but <laughs> but it doesn't seem to actually cut into the bone at all. <sighs> Uh, but that was just one action. You do have more. Uh, I will take, seeing how cool Thee was, I'm going to try the second attack at a negative five penalty. All right. Again, daggers are oh, at right. a minus four penalty because they're minus agile. Four. So that's <laughs> not great. For eight, an eight. Oh, no. No, an eight won't do it. Yeah. So that's all Ingot's going to do. <laughs> 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 Ingot's playing drums on this thing's rib cage. Uh, it's not very effective. Gristle. You might have to step in and save the day here. What are you two doing? Just just hit with your your steel. I don't understand why you're so slow. This is ridiculous. I uh, bound my way over to this one, the, the north, northern more one. Okay. Um, and that's one action that I... You know what? As a fighter, you really just got a slashy. So mm, I'm gonna slash. I'm gonna try to super slash. Uh, this is the power okay. attack again. I only have two two more actions left, so let's see what happens. Uh, 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 uh. So it's a thirteen. A thirteen is a miss. Oh this no! Thing is a little quicker than its companion was. The skelet the zombie was easy to hit. These guys are a little tougher. Shoot, I thought it'd be a oh, well. Does so because I called out power attack and that cost two actions, does I it can't do anything cost else? Two actions. That's okay. correct. So you you uh wind up for a mighty swing thinking you're easily gonna take this thing <sighs> down and it ducks under the blade as it's passing overhead and you whiff completely. Okay, uh maybe I was talking some smack earlier. Apologies. These they're not that they're not that easy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> At least Ingot played the xylophone. I don't know what that means or what that is. <laughs> These skeletons are not too happy about being assaulted oh. uh, in their home. This is their home. You've come in here and it's really, it's, it's, they're not, they don't approve. They are, uh, one, the one that, that drew blood on Ingot, uh, it, it's going in for the kill. Oh it's no. Opening. It is just going to try to continue hacking at you, Ingot, with its claws. And it's right next to you, so it can use all three actions. Oh, to no! The first attack is going to hit an armor class of 14. That is my armor class. Oh, the claws come in, <laughs> raking across your chest. Oh, no! Take four points of slashing damage okay, from the first okay. claw. Still up. I'm still up. With its second attack... It's going to hit an armor class of 17. That'll hit. Slashing again, just tearing into you in a mad frenzy. Oh. Three more points of slashing. Yeah. That's all Ingot had left. Oh. Oh, no. As it just tears into Ingot. Now, Ingot, when you reach zero hit points, mm -hmm. you fall unconscious oh. immediately. And you are at dying one. Every round, you're going to have to make checks to see whether you stabilize or whether you continue down the drying, dying track until you get to dying four. <laughs> and at that point, well, you're going to have to have a new character ready. No! <laughs> we just started. <laughs> we just met him. <laughs> <laughs> the skeleton that drops Ingot uh, sees that he is down and it is just going to take a step with its third action to get into a position to take down his friends as well. They think the battle is turning around for them. The other skeleton uh, that that Gristle tried to do a mighty power attack on is just going to try to scrabble at her armor, tear it, trying to tear it up so that he can get at the soft flesh beneath. No thanks. Uh, the first attack is going to hit armor class of 16. Uh, still at 18. <laughs> All right. Uh, the second attack is way below that, and its third attack, crit fishing, is only going to hit a 16 again. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good roll on that last one, but those those third attack penalties are huge, so it is just uselessly scrambling to get at you, but can't quite connect. That is the end of their round. Waverly, you see Ingot go down, and the skeletons are now, like, hungrily scrabbling to get at your friends. What do you do? I would like to... Oh, gosh. All right. So I'm going to... Waverly's just kind of going to stand there, and she's going to focus, and you kind of see, like, the, the air kind of ripple around her as she um, is, is almost, like filling herself with this positive energy and she's 
she's going to cast heal uh, with all three of her actions. Um, and yeah, I want to make sure I can get ingot. So. Okay. Uh, so you cast heal. And when you cast heal, the number of actions that you use uh, determine its effect. When you use all three of your actions, uh, it affects everything in a 30 foot burst. Yep. Uh, and it is going to, in a 30 foot emanation, all targets, living and undead, uh, are affected. And these undead creatures <gasps> are indeed uh, negatively affected by positive energy. So it's going to deal some damage to them as well. Uh, roll your healing, and that will also be your damage as these creatures make a save to attempt to resist this very horrible effect against them. And since this is the first time I'm doing this, because I'm healing, I add plus eight to the healing, correct? But I don't uh, add plus eight to damage? Well, here is an interesting thing. It says that the, the base spell is 1d8 hit points. And then it says with two actions, it gains range and increases the healing. With three actions, it says it disperses it in a 30-foot emanation, but it doesn't specify whether that is progressive from, uh, like, it's easy to assume that you might also add that eight hit points. Um, or does it actually just, because it doesn't specify, is it just the 1d8? I actually don't know. I'm going to rule in this particular instance that it's progressive. You've used all three of your actions, you've invested those. So I would say that it would be, uh, you do get that extra eight hit points. So it's 1d8 plus eight. If I'm wrong about that, we'll change it later. But for now it's 1d8 cool. plus eight. I like it, here it comes. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a two. <laughs> no, ten. Still 10. I got new dice, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Well, both of the skeletons passed a fortitude save. However, they have a weakness to positive energy. So even though they take half damage, they also take an additional five points of damage. <laughs> and they are thoroughly destroyed. Yay! Sorry! Uh, they both crumble into dust as the silvery fire of Saren Ray spreads throughout the room, burning them away. Uh, they are nothing but piles of ash and bone as Ingot's eyes flutter open and he is restored 10 hit points. Now you always start from zero. I don't know if you would have had technically what's called negative hit points. There are no more negative hit points in Pathfinder. Uh -huh. You just go to zero and become dying. So you always, so when you get healed, you start from zero and just gain those 10 back. Uh, because it's magical healing, you don't get what is called the wounded condition, which sometimes you would have if you if you stabilize uh, and and are are brought uh, above zero. Sometimes you get the wounded condition. In this particular instance, you would not, thanks to the magical healing. And that is it. After a few moments, uh, you watch the bodies; they don't stir again. Uh, the skeletons themselves have basically been reduced to to bone dust, and the zombie is doesn't stir again. There are no other coffins or sarcophagi that burst open. It looks like everything's quiet and you are as, safe. As the fire explosion and the dust clears, Ingot looks through his glasses and can see Waverly sort of in the distance and walks up to her and is just, Ingot owes you Ingot's life. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, but you don't owe me anything. Ingot will remember. He Are looks you? over at, at Thee, who was fighting alongside, and says, But Ingot was brave, right? Ingot has always been brave. Just sometimes strange, but brave. I think we could all agree to that. Uh, Ingot, I'm surprised. I thought you would use your, your magics uh, the whole way through, but you try to stab a skeleton. You did a a, a, a a sound thing with the bones. That was interesting. But you tried, and I think that's very important. And I know you're trying to learn to be <clears throat> great like me, but <laughs> you're well on your way, I think. Ingot, thanks, Gristle, for the attempt at leadership. All right, didn't have to phrase it like that. <clears throat> I did kill some of these things, also. As very did, well. uh, Beverly, uh, Waverly. Um, 
when you look over at her, I want to be, uh, I, I, Waverly is kind of, was it the zombie that fell to Ash? Uh, it the be zombie, heavy. the zombie was killed first by Gristle. How, did, but it, like, it fell to Ash, correct? Uh, it's currently oh, mostly intact in the, oh. in the sarcophagus. That body is mostly intact. The skeletons okay. were the ones that basically just were burned away by your spell. Um. Then when you look over at Waverly, she's trying to lift this zombie corpse back up into its sarcophagus <laughs> to lay it to rest peacefully. Um, sure. And she can't really lift it on her own, so maybe someone could help her. Um, what are you doing? Oh, I, I want him to be at peace. That's just a skeleton. I help Waverly. Thank you. <laughs> It uh, was also moving around literally seconds ago, so... Well, those, those are ghost rules, I thought. You know, we talked about this. <laughs> well, it seems it was disturbed when this sword was taken from it, so we could question whether or not it was truly its fault or not. Perhaps it was the thief who stole the sword who's at fault. But why should this life... Um, or what was once a life be punished and not laid to rest properly when it wasn't its fault to begin with. Okay, I mean, uh, I don't really understand what the afterlife is like. I assume it's pretty cool, so I guess it would be really annoying to be pulled from a neat wonderland of rainbows and mead to be back in a cave, so I guess I'd be annoyed too. Can we just put this down, please? Yes, uh, and I'll <laughs> lower it down, and I'll place the sword and the shield nicely back upon the corpse, um, and try to watch uh, Thee as he helps me push the thing back on the lid. <laughs> <laughs> so you rebury the corpse with its with its sword and shield. Uh, the lid. <laughs> Uh, slides back onto the sarcophagus and you are all left there sort of in the light of this flickering blue torch as as we're sliding the lid in i want to take a look inside the coffin to see if there is anything inside of it sure uh with a go ahead and make a perception check that is 16. 16. that doesn't look like there was anything else in there uh okay. whatever if if there was anything else in there it's it's long rotted away um that, that sword and shield are really the only things that survived the test of time. Are uh, you looking for something, uh, Fee? Perhaps more cursed swords to steal so we can make more uh, cool zombies? Or what's what's going on over there? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, exactly that. Grissel, you read my mind all the time. Mm. So was so, there anything in there or no? Just no, again? no cursed swords, what a shame. Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, Ingata, how are you doing? Uh, you, you healed up? You feeling ready to keep on fighting the good fight? Ingot is not a fan of unconsciousness. And Ingot is ready to continue. Should words be spoken for closure? Oh, yes. And Ingot sort of moves over to sort of create a, a circle around the sarcophagus extending mm -hmm. his hands um and waverly will uh just kind of quickly fumble through her bag and pull out like a little a little book and say some words um probably words straight from S saren ray um and and you you just kind of see like a light little glow around her um as she says these words um and it's quick and it's simple Is anybody else doing anything while this is happening? I'm going to look around the room uh, for anything of goods or treasure. I previously said that I don't just loot the dead, but there's a caveat that unless I deaded them myself. Oh. Gotcha. Right. That makes I just sense. don't tell them that. Right. I, I would follow, I would be following uh, Thea around the room because we had just had this conversation a second ago about <laughs> looking for stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, doing a pretty thorough search of the rest of the room, um, it doesn't look like there was really any other treasure. Uh, the only things 
Uh, the only other object in the room really that draws any attention is the is the torch itself. Um, you note that it does not emit any kind of heat. Um, you know, it, it just is. And aside from being kind of creepy, um, it it's a, a solid light source. Um, it doesn't you know, emit heat. Uh, it does not. It does not emit any kind of heat. There's uh, the flame itself is just it's just light. I put my hand very close to the flame. I mean, you could get uh, even even touching the flame. It's it's mm. it's just almost like it's just the image of of a fire, but not really one. Perhaps an illusion of some kind, but it gives off very real light. I'm gonna point that out. This torch is it is not real fire, but it does create light. So it's like a ghost torch. Yes. Sure. And it's gonna pull out his crystal for detect magic and see if it's emanating. Yeah, that, uh, it does. It does appear to eliminate or emanate a, a field of magical energy. You can make an Arcana check if you'd like. Yes, questions. please. Sure. Uh, Fifteen. Sure. Um, these are are definitely not uh, unheard of items. Uh, lots of adventurers like to carry these because because the name says it all. It's an ever burning torch. It will burn forever, but it will not uh, emit any heat. You can, if you want to hide the light, you can just put it in your bag. Um, won't won't cause any problems for you. Uh, uh, otherwise, it'll just burn forever. Puts down the crystal and looks over at the and says, "The has discovered an ever-burning torch." Well, first of all, I was standing right next to him, so I feel like we did this together as a joint. <laughs> uh, Grissom. Uh, what? The next time that you do something, that means you have to give me credit. We're working as a team. I thought we had this conversation earlier. <clears throat> I just didn't think you were listening. But uh, does anyone else want it? I, I would not be using it. I prefer the shadows myself. Oh, right. You you both have that dark vision situation happening. Uh, what? No, I can't. I, I said I cannot see in the dark. Oh, you can't. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, can. I actually didn't hear you, but... Uh, Okay, well, uh, you, you don't want to hold it, or you just don't want your hands busy, or...? I... I sneak and stealth. If I walk with a torch, I will not sneak and stealth well. Oh, okay, got it. Wasn't thinking that far ahead, and you are uh, thinking them there. Uh, Beverly, but Waverly, come yes. here. Oh, yes. Two things. One, please hold this torch, light the way. <laughs> Uh, also, um, you know what? Uh, you're good at making notes. Could you make a note uh, and like maybe stick it on that tombstone? Hey, don't take the sword, the dagger from here. You will get uh, attacked by a zombie. Something to that effect. Yes. Uh, and so Waverly will write uh, and tear out of a, a page from her notebook um, and sort of just kind of write a little warning. Um, do not dead open inside. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps another adventurer will be born in Otari, and they'll come down here and want to search this very conspicuous-looking grave area. Uh, but uh, we should probably warn the future generations of adventurers if we can. It's very good thinking. I can do some forethought as well. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. What else is in this room, Jim Jam? Uh, not a whole lot else. Uh, there are just the the other coffins are uh, made of rotting wood and seem to be of uh, less grand stature than the central sarcophagus. But aside from uh, you know, Thea is already you you have the ever burning torch. It doesn't look like there's really anything else there to discover. This area, did we, was it known that it was here? Because we got here through like a wine cellar or was this, is this, this a known? This was a barricade, remember? Mm. Yeah, so, so the fishery had a, uh, no, let me put this way. None of you necessarily knew that these tunnels were here. Um, Waverly, you have heard that there are rumors of lots and lots of caverns and tunnels and various places uh, rumored to be beneath Otari. So this isn't a complete surprise, but in terms of how you got into this, this complex of tunnels in the first place, uh, you did come through the basement of the fishery in Otari, um, but the wall had been broken through. It looks like somebody had taken some tools and actually dug their way into that basement. 
Um, what about time? How much time has passed? Uh, difficult to tell underground, but it's probably been a couple of hours since you first came in. So too soon to sleep. <laughs> it's never too soon to sleep if you're tired. I mean, we've learned that, if nothing else, over the last couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you guys are looking for some extra hit points, uh, remember that uh, everybody would have been affected by Waverly's spell because she did cast it in a 30-foot emanation. So I don't. I know that Ingot was the one in most dire need, but all of you would have benefited from it. Um, you also have the option, if you have any Elixirs of Life or Healing Potions, or if any of you are trained in medicine and have a healer's kit, you can use the treat wounds action. You guys can take 10 minutes and somebody can basically slap some, rub some dirt on it and, and stitch you up as best they can. Unless you critically fail the treat wounds check. Uh, and then the opposite happens. That's how they get you. <laughs> that's you, how they get you. You can't do medicine without the healer's pack, though. I don't you do need the healer's it. tools, okay. you know. Hmm, I'm okay in medicine, too. Too bad. Well, I'm feeling uh, quite ready for the next adventure. <laughs> How about you all? We could use a good night's rest to oh. regain um, the ability to participate. But if you'd like to continue, I can hold this torch. <laughs> 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 well, uh, how about the rest of you then? Perhaps there are other areas to explore while we are here. We have plenty to do, and so far I'm fine, but... Eh. Uh, um, so, uh, okay, uh, Beverly, you'll be cool, just keep moving on then, right? You're not just, uh, you're fine, right? Oh, yeah, you're fine. Yes. She's fine. She's great. Yes. All right, let's just keep going then. <laughs> yep. You're Don't forget fine, to Beverly. <laughs> Uh, Y'all can I, kill yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you'll be appreciating me when I can't kill you in the next oh, no. combat. <laughs> um, well, you know, do you want, I mean, out of character. Oh, we're like, moving on. We are going. <laughs> I got the time. You said it. We're doing it. <laughs> There's no take backsies. Uh, no take backsies. <laughs> we're role playing. Hmm. God damn it. All right. So. <laughs> I would lead the way, um, I guess, back towards where we came, where there was the, yeah. the diverging path. Yeah. Uh, indeed, it doesn't take you very long at, at all to make your way back out to where the barricade once stood uh, before you took it apart, Crystal. To the left, there's a winding tunnel that will, or maybe I got it wrong and that's to the right. It doesn't matter. In one direction is a winding tunnel that will take you back towards the fishery basement. No, I was right. It is to the left. To the right, there is a long winding stretch of darkness that Thea and Ingot have actually explored to a point uh, where you know that there, you know, you got to a point where you know that there is a chamber somewhere down there. Um, but you basically got to that point and then turned around and went back rather than risk getting caught in something on your own. Um, what do you guys do? Um, so, uh, Thee and, and uh, uh, Bebop, you guys uh, went down here earlier. Um, did you see anything bad, good, mysterious? Ingot remembers a large chamber and cool air. Yes. Uh, and then we came back because oh. you told us not to leave each other alone. Yes, thank you for following orders. I appreciate that. Mm, <clears throat> All right. I, mm. What? Yeah, so... Um, you know, I feel like last time we were being pretty sneaky, pretty stealthy. It didn't help anything. Uh, communication, yeah, nothing we talked oh, about. Yes. What oh, do we all think? Uh, yeah, I'm just doing my best here. <clears throat> what do you all think we should, uh, how we should approach this dark, uh, drafty corridor, as uh, Bebop put it? You said we I'm were being waving. sneaky. It was literally just me. Mm. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a perfect person. I could have a bad memory. It's, it's possible. I will admit. Uh, We're really just kind of waving the torch. <laughs> um, this could guide our way. Um, would you like me to go forward so you can see? Carefully. Yes, that's not a problem. Um, Jim, is there is there anything that I can see within uh? A few feet? 
Uh, no, in fact, uh, Ingot and the you guys would remember that it's it, it would, it's a couple minutes before you're going to hit this chamber. Right. There's some winding tunnels, uh, so you guys could actually travel pretty safely. Uh, I feel like we've been walking and talking. Yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, so walking and talking down the tunnel, you manage to uh, it carries on for quite a while, <laughs> but eventually you do see uh, at the very very edge of the flickering blue light. Um, and don't forget, Ingot, that you had cast light, uh, which is active for the whole day. So oh, great. It's also Ingot's spell. So you guys actually can see pretty well. Um, however, you do note that there is uh, the opening to a room of some kind ahead. And you also easily hear the sounds of high-pitched yipping speech in several distinct voices. You're not sure exactly what or how many, but you definitely catch that there is that room is occupied just a moment i'd like to try and sneak closer if i may sure easy to do with a stealth roll all right that is a total of 12 plus 6, 18. 18. Nice. All right. So you sneak your way up. Uh, and you don't have dark vision, but you do have low light vision. Yes. So even though the you the, the entrance to this room is just at the edge of the light from your friends, mm -hmm. you can see a little bit further. Um, Perfect. It, it, it's a little bit more effective for you. And you're looking into this room, and it's dim, but you do see a few shapes. Um, you get to the entrance of this chamber, and you see that there are four short blue-scaled reptilian creatures wearing ratty leathers and carrying crude spears. They currently appear to be engaged in trying to saw their way through the iron bars of a caged area in this room where several old boxes are stacked, and it seems like they're arg arguing over this frustrating process. They're so intent on their work, in fact, that they don't uh, appear to have noticed you. They don't, they don't look behind them. They're totally engaged on the work at hand. Um, in fact, I would say that you currently have the unnoticed condition. Uh, there's actually a hierarchy of conditions related to being hidden from your enemies and the levels at which they perceive and you perceive them. Uh, when you're unnoticed, that's the highest level of hidden. Uh, the creatures in front of you do not even know you are there. Just below that, there's undetected. If you were undetected, they would know that you were somewhere around, but they wouldn't have any idea where. Like if you had rolled a really bad stealth and they heard something, they mm. might not see you. They might they, but they know somebody's there, so they're on alert. Um, they could try to guess where you were um, uh, using seek actions if they wanted to pinpoint your exact location. Uh, below undetected is hidden. Hidden would means that they know sort of on a map what space you occupy, but not your precise location. Uh, and then um, if they, uh, if you were observed, it means they've spotted you and they know exactly where you are. They can see you clearly. Currently, they are observed to you because you see them there, uh, but you are undetected to them. And just so you're aware, uh, when a creature is und uh, when, when you are undetected, every creature that does not detect you is flat-footed to you if that's mm. at all relevant to your Got to it. your next actions. But your friends are a good 30 feet behind you down the mm -hmm. tunnel. Um, so am I within visible distance for them? Mm -hmm. You're just at the edge of the light so they can see you sort of like crouched down at the entrance to this, uh, to this room. They can clearly see you. Uh, so I'm just gonna like pull out my dag. Did, did I, I saw how many figures there were? There are four of them. So I'll just, I'll like look in the direction of my party, hold up four fingers, hold up my dagger, and then do like a cutting across motion to try and just emphasize that there are four targets ahead. And then like do the, the general finger point in that direction. Mm -hmm. Is is uh, the going to buy four daggers? <laughs> He intends on harming whoever's inside there. If only I could speak with him just quickly. But why does he have four daggers? I thought he only had one. No, I, I believe he's symboling that um, there are four 
enemies ahead, but we don't need to kill them. We could let them live. They haven't tried to harm us in any way. Oh, because they're selling the daggers. I'm not sure about the daggers. Okay, well, I'll, uh, we'll get, we'll circle back to that later. Uh, but we're supposed to be quiet, I think, while he's buying daggers, I think. Oh, yes, we're supposed to be quiet, <laughs> but I believe he wants us to go kill the four, uh, uh, people, creatures inside of this room, but I don't think we need to kill them. They haven't been hostile to us. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, let's be sneaky and... Um, you know, if you guys want a dagger, just think about what kind you want, like a short one or a long one or silver or copper. You know, just keep, keep that in mind so we can get through this quickly. Uh, Fee, your companions seem to be there. They're talking amongst each other. Um, you're standing there. What do you, what do you want to do? Literally was waiting for them to come forward. So when I see them doing this, I'm just very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we start to come forward for that conversation. Yeah, but okay. I would like to stealth because that's what Gristle told me to do. Yes. Okay. But I am so, holding the torch. <laughs> so I would. Uh, that's true. You are holding the torch. Um, I would like to stealth so with the torch. <laughs> I would like a stealth check from all of you. In fact, in fact, just because this is gonna get messy real fast, let's roll initiative. But everybody will be rolling stealth instead of perception this time. I just rolled a nat twenty. Well, congratulations. Do I have to re-roll it? Cause you no, said it's no, fine. You can keep it. I don't, I don't okay. care. It's fine. Why, why would you have to re-roll it? You did it. <laughs> but but not perception stealth. Yeah, this is this counts as an initiative roll using stealth. So oh, what is your total, Waverly? 21. But do you want to dock me any sort of... Uh... Oh, no. Don't worry. They'll notice you very quickly. That's okay. not the issue. Okay. I, I've got that covered. Uh, <laughs> Ingot, what does yours look like? Inget, you're know. muted. Yeah, you're muted. <laughs> Inget got a uh, natural one, and Inget only has a plus one for stealth, so that is a grand total of two. <laughs> oh no, Inget. Oh no. Does it matter that you uh, rolled uh, a one at the beginning? Does that do anything special? No, uh, for initiative, it just okay. means that he's. It just means he's going last in the round. Yeah. Okay. This means that uh, you know he he doesn't do a good job, but it doesn't have any additional <laughs> effect in this particular instance. Um, however, what did you get for uh, for initiative, Gristle? Three. <laughs> okay. Well, everybody is. I feel like I feel like Waverly and and <laughs> Fee were like, okay, we're gonna stealth ahead, and you've got <laughs> Ingot and uh, Ingot and Gristle like, wait, what about the daggers? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dagger are we buying? <laughs> I rolled a 14. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Save us, <laughs> please. <laughs> for the... Lord. Okay, Waverly. Uh, we're in rounds. Now, the creatures ahead have not noticed you, but you are going first, and uh, you make your way up to the entrance of this tunnel. Indeed, at this point, the room now is full of this eerie blue light, and as soon as that happens, the creatures ahead of you, like, stop their bickering between each other and, like, turn back to see you standing in the doorway with a torch, but it is still your turn, and you have two more actions. Oh, if they see me, I'm just gonna pull one of those, like, hi? Um, we mean you no harm. Oh no. We're just passing through. Um, and I will hold my action. Okay. You say hi, and then it is <laughs> Thee's turn. The, these creatures all turn. There's like this moment of stunned silence where they've all turned to see you <laughs> and her uh, in the doorway, a cast, cast in this blue flame, and. Waverly tells them hi. <laughs> what do you do? Are they holding their weapons up? Uh, no. Currently, they they were they were holding tools. They were trying to pry open this gate, uh, this gated off area in the room. Uh, but they do have spears near at hand, and it looks like they could very easily, with say one action, become armed. You know what? Thee has a little monologue in his head. This will be a good lesson for her thesis. <laughs> and I guess I'll just wait, because she's You'll talking just... to them. Hey, 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> my whole plan was to run in and attack them, and they started a conversation. So I, <laughs> I'm not going to take that away. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I have to practice hand signals next time. <laughs> We're out of here. We wouldn't want to Four. take that away. Uh, okay. So again, like, blue light fills the room. These creatures that were trying to pry open this gate, they all stop. Like, a crowbar clatters to the ground. They're all, like, absolutely stunned. And then one of them points right at the doorway where Thee and Waverly are standing. And you hear this, and they all grab spears uh, off the floor, off their backs. Uh, the one was leaning up against the bars of this cage and they rush forward. It does not look like they are interested in saying hi. Uh, they all take one action to arm themselves. One of them standing back uh, right where he is, is just gonna chuck this spear right at Waverly. <laughs> It comes flying through the air and hits armor class 15. You hit. Oh my god. Oh, oh the <laughs> Inter, no. Into your gut, Waverly. Waverly the intern. <laughs> oh no. Uh, you're gonna take four points of piercing damage. The spear's gah, catching you in the side. It clatters to the ground, but draws quite a bit of blood. Uh, two more of these kobolds. I uh, gave it away now. They're kobolds. Oh, uh. They come rushing forward, spears leveled at Fee. Uh, both of them sort of charge in unison. And I'm not one even of in them the room actually. Yet. What's that? I'm not even in the room yet. <laughs> I, but you're you're close enough. You're close enough. Uh, they come charging, but because you guys have actually stayed in the tunnel, they don't have enough room to get around you which is good. Uh, so they're both just going to stand in front of you, Thee, and stab, stab, stab. Uh, but they only have one action with which to stab. Also, Too did bad. they see me? Uh, currently, yes, because you are standing in the... You're standing next to Waverly, who has a torch in her hand. Oh, no, the torch! Uh, you're cast in light. Decidedly <laughs> unstealthy. I thought we were supposed to take it, because it was special. <laughs> <laughs> You guys had to drop on them, but you specifically gave it away. Uh, the creatures come up. One of them whiffs completely. You easily turn aside the point of its spear with your dagger. Uh, the other one takes that moment to reach in and get you right under the shoulder. And you are going to take... What was the uh, total? Two, uh, 19. Okay. You're going to take <laughs> two points of damage. Got it. Uh, that is, the other one uh, doesn't really have room to come in there, uh, so he's just going to stand back and shout encouragement to his companions. So that will take us, Gristle and Inga, you guys are standing about 30 feet back from all of this, oh, and no. you hear this shout. Um, first, you actually hear Waverly say uh, hi, and then you hear <laughs> these shouts of alarm and panic, and then the rushing of combat. You can tell that something going up, something up there is, is not going right. What do you guys do? Uh, it was actually Gristle's turn first. Okay, I wasn't sure because I wrote so low. <clears throat> well, I guess I misinterpreted all of that situation that just happened, so uh, we fight! <laughs> <laughs> um, so in this corridor, I can't see where the kobolds are, but um, can I can I move forward through... I can't remember what the rules are to move through people in the party, or can I walk around them easily? So when it comes to people in your party, you can move through them no problem. Uh, okay, when okay. it comes to enemies, however, that's a different story. Okay. Um, and you can do uh, an acrobatics check to attempt to move through a square, but uh, uh, it, require, it requires a check on your part if you want to move through an enemy's space. But you can um, do it. I don't... So I can't see the enemies on the map, but uh, is... Uh, fixing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where they are. They could be anywhere. They're ghosts to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Although uh, technically, you aren't sure where they are anyway because you uh, you aren't up oh. there. Oh, okay, I see. So I think I would uh, run up towards uh, where I heard uh, Waverly talking earlier. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, she's here, I guess. And maybe just kind of, can I stand there? Is that too? 
Is yeah, no, you, you can, you, you find a spot. Uh, okay. It's a really, like, you sort of wedge yourself in front of Waverly, who's nursing a, a spear wound at this point. You wedge yourself in front of her. You can see now into like, the room, but there's this jutting of rock that makes a really awkward corner. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, because you, with your great sword, you could go ahead and make an attack, uh, but I would say that the enemy, because of the way that the, the tunnel is shaped, uh, your enemy would have a, a cover bonus to their armor class. I'm gonna do it. No one attacks my intern. <clears throat> so, no yeah. one attacks your intern. <laughs> uh, so I just roll normally, and they get a plus to their to me hitting yep. them. Okay. I'll, I, I'll I'll keep track of that. You don't need to worry about it. Just know um, that oh boy. Um, oh, I I rolled before I called that out, but I was gonna just do a power attack again because my only thing I can do. <laughs> um, gotcha. I so I did roll a seventeen plus uh uh, uh, uh eight, which is like a lot twenty. <laughs> 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 25. If this okay. if this outcropping of rock, uh, it might have been a critical hit, but because of that little bonus I get to my armor class, it's just going to be a regular hit. Okay. Uh, and then I roll d12 twice, plus 3, so that's a 5, plus 9. Uh, 14 plus 3 is 15, 16, 17. Yep. Uh, that greatsword, man, does it deal I a lot like of damage. I feel like I do I do this, and I kind of just, in this small space, I sort of stab forward, like, ugh, just stabby. <laughs> yeah, you just, like, stab through the gap, and uh, this this creature was not at all prepared for you to come rushing out of the darkness at it, and you just spear it right through the chest. Uh, your blade sort of bursts out the other side of its body. You pull it back real quick, almost having to, like, kick this creature off your blade and it just crumples to the ground it is it is very very dead oh beverly stand back you get that stupid the, the torch the torch i think we've made a terrible mistake <laughs> uh that creature very very dead uh but that was your third uh your second and third action because power attack is two actions which will take us to ingot next ingot's gonna follow uh gristle's sort of example and move forward as well mm -hmm. um and let's see. So if if Ingot is going to cast something and there is an ally in the square in front, it will affect the ally. Uh, well, no. So if you're making a spell attack or a ranged attack through an ally square, mm -hmm. uh, your enemy on the other side is going to get a cover bonus. Got but it. again, uh, your allies don't actually, they're not big five foot blocks. Right. So uh so you can see around your allies um uh it's just that it makes it a little bit harder so soft cover like that gives your enemy a plus one bonus to their armor class a little bit harder to hit but not not too bad okay so he'll move forward up uh behind the i guess to look down to see if if he can see any of the other kobolds oh yeah uh one of them is is on the ground just in a pool of its own blood mm. dead uh, but there is another one waving a spear up at thee and there are two that have sort of stayed uh down in the back of the room uh one of them just threw a spear but the other one looks like it's it's winding up to also there are three left total so ingot uh is going to pull out from his belt this crystal that looks like it has the small like swirling storm on the inside and yeah. he's going to fling it forward and crack it like a glow stick and he's going to do ray of frost and a ray nice. of frost just pours out a blast of cold air very nice uh spell attack i believe yep so let's do that oh nice 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 uh, 19. 19 is a hit. That'll do it. Nice. Uh, go ahead and roll that damage. Now, were you targeting the one that was right next to the or are you targeting yes. one that stay back? Okay, so the one yeah. right in front of the mm -hmm. Cold damage equal to 1d4 of your, plus your intelligence. Okay. Oh, yeah! Eight damage. Oh, God. Okay. Eight cold damage. <laughs> yep. Uh, you fire off this Ray of Frost, which strikes this little scaly creature right between the eyes and its whole head uh, is just ca is just like suddenly dripping icicles, its flesh freezing and cracking in an instant. And uh, it falls to the ground. And as it does, like its jaw actually, it's suddenly frozen jaw like cracks and you can see it like split off from the upper half of its jaw. It's, it's brutal and it is dead. Again, Ingot looks down at his hands. He's just like, what have I done? What has Ingot done? Not a boy, bling blop. 
<laughs> you have helped. Oh, we are at the top of the next round. It is Waverly's turn. Waverly, these creatures were not interested in a conversation. But at least you know that now. What do you do? Always good to try. Um, Grissom try. just yelled at me about mistakes, and I'm holding this torch. Oh, um, um, and I'm just going to drop it. Yep. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to raise my shield. Okay. Uh, because it is a free action to drop something, yes? It's a free action to drop. Uh, raising a shield is one action. And then for my uh, next two actions, I am going to target one of these um, creatures in front of me. Yep. Uh, within 60 feet, hopefully. Um, oh, they're definitely both within 60 feet of you. Uh, well, I can only target one, uh, so dealer's choice. <laughs> and uh, I would like to cast Daze upon it. Daze! All right, so why don't you tell me what Daze does? Yeah, so I'm going to target their mind and Daze it with a mental jolt. It deals mental damage equal to uh, my spellcasting ability modifier, and the target must attempt a basic will save. And if you critically fail, you're also stunned. Yikes. So please. Uh, just so you guys fail. know or are aware, mental damage is always non lethal. Uh, uh huh. So just keep that in mind when you're using it. Uh, it can be useful, A, if you want to keep something alive, uh, but also just keep it in mind if you wanted something to be very, very dead, that mental damage starts as non lethal. But either way, my total on the will save is an 18. You pass. Okay. Still going to deal half damage, though, on a basic save. Yes, but I uh, don't do I don't I don't have it saying that I roll anything. So I guess you just take it's just equal. It's equal to your wisdom modifier. Like it's just okay. automatic damage equal to the wisdom modifier. So what is your okay. what's your my wisdom, wisdom modifier? modifier is four. So you'll take two. All right. So you have two points of damage. Uh, there's this burst of silvery light around one of these creatures' heads. It looks, it shakes it off real quick. Uh, still looks like it's seeing stars a little bit, but most of it, uh, it manages to power through. That takes us to Thee's turn. Thie. Uh, I'm just gonna stab at the one in front of me. Uh, the one in front of you died. It got killed. Oh, uh, there were was, two that attacked uh, yeah. me, though. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, Gristle stabbed through the first one, just mm -hmm. outright killing it, and then Ingot yes. killed the second one. So both of the ones that attacked you are dead. The only okay. other ones that are left are across the room from you, uh, near the the caged area. Okay. Um. I w yeah, I'll make my use one action to make my way over to them, and then just swing at one of them. All right. That is a thirteen to hit. Thirteen is a miss. These guys oh, are are wily. I use a, a second second attack. Just nothing. Yeah. Uh, that's a fourteen. A fourteen. Yeah, these guys are a little bit quicker than you gave them credit for. It was real easy when you had the drop on them, but now they're ready for battle, and they don't, appear to. Don't say that. That was not on me. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, Thee. It was all your fault. <laughs> and that, unfortunately that's for you, Thee, it is also now their turn. Oh no. And. When you step up to them, they employ a tactic that you're kind of familiar with. One of them stays right where he is, sort of keeping your attention oh, with no. his spear waving in front of in front of your face. The other mm. one scampers around behind you, catching you in a little pincher move, and they both attack at the same time. Okay. You are flat footed because they are flanking you. No. Uh, the first one is going to hit an armor class of 17. Now, when you're flat-footed, you reduce your normal armor class by two. Yep. That'll hit. So it dives in with the spear and catches you, and it seems to know, while while you're distracted by its buddy, he, this guy knows what he's doing. He's, he's very well-trained in this kind of combat. He does something that you yourself like to do to a lot of your enemies and gets you right right in the kidney, a nice little sucker punch <laughs> while you're distracted by his oh. ally. You're gonna mm. take a little bit of sneak attack damage from this as well as your basic damage. Uh, that is going to be a total of five points. Of okay, damage. got Stabs it. Stabs you while, you while his companion is distracting you. Uh, his companion, however, flubs his attack and rolls uh, like a, a seven total. So that's, that's yeah, nowhere that near is. getting you, but he, Provided that distraction. They both go ahead and take a second attack. This at a minus five penalty. Uh, and both of them are going to miss. 
Got it. Uh, and that is going to be all they can do uh, for this round. One of them moved. Uh, the other one does technically have one more action. But he is... Uh, I might as well go crit fishing. I'll crit fish. Why not? I'll see if no. I can roll in that 20. Let's see if that happens. There's a 5% chance. Uh, doesn't do it. With a 10 on the die, with that minus 10 penalty for that third attack. Yeah. So he whiffs completely. Leaving himself perhaps open for Gristle. Yeah. Um... I want to try something new. Uh, I'm gonna try. To, can I throw my my? Uh, I have a dagger. Hmm? Does it? Do I have to yep. step in action to take it out then? You do need to draw it's it not. with one action, uh, okay. but then you can easily throw it with a second action. Um, I want to. I'm gonna. I do that thing. And right. I want to throw it, yelling. I thought this was about daggers. I'm very confused still to this moment. Um. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I rolled a 19 plus, uh, wait, what's my, what's my dagger stats? Uh, uh, I should have thought this forehead. Okay, I think I rolled, oh, I see it. Um, 19 plus, uh, 25. 25, that is a hit, a definite hit. Uh, dagger sinks deep into this thing's back as it's trying to harry Fee with his spear. Go ahead and roll damage. Yes, I have. Yes, I have my D four out already. Look at me. I, oh, there it is. <laughs> Bustling noise. Ooh, that was a four plus three, so that's four, five, six, seven. All right, seven points of damage indeed. When you are throwing a weapon, you get to add your strength bonus to that damage, just like as a melee. If it was a melee attack, uh, this was the one that Beverly. Or I can, now I'm calling her Beverly. <laughs> Waverly yes. had had dazed a moment ago, which is enough to drop this guy because he was already wounded a little bit. So he just drops as your dagger sinks right between the shoulder blades and he keels over. You um, do have one more action left. Uh, I guess um, I would like to flank the other one to help Fee, if that helps. Like, wa like walk uh, over to... Is it too far? I'm not sure. I'm right here. Well, I, I had... I had assumed that the one that was closest to you was the one that you were throwing a dagger at. Right, so was the other one too bad. far? The so one the that's... other one, uh, the other one you could move, but the problem is it's backed up against this caged area. So Ooh. you could get next to it, but you wouldn't be able to get into a flanking position because okay. its back is against a wall. I see, But I see. you could put yourself in a position so that Thee could shift just a little bit and get himself into a flanking position mm -hmm. when it's his turn again. Uh, what's I... your move? Oh, my movement is uh, 20. 20 feet. So unfortunately, actually, 25. You only have 25. 25. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you have just enough movement that if you put yourself next to this creature, uh, Fee would theoretically be able to put himself in a flanking position, but you you can't quite get there now because it okay. is the way it's positioned. And I oh. want to yell also, hey, should we like capture this one and ask it questions? Do they talk? I, I mean, I don't, how do we, I've never really taken anyone to prison before, but anyway, just do what y'all are going to do, I guess. Do what y'all are gonna do, Ingot. Do what well, y'all are gonna do. <laughs> Ingot, yeah, uh, is kind of confused about what to do in the situation, but takes a, a page <laughs> out of Gristle's book uh, and uses one action to sort of twirl around. And within his robes, he pulls out this crossbow and takes to one knee to get a steadied aim uh, mm. and is gonna take a shot. So one action to, to draw it and then the other action to shoot. Well, you would have to see uh, crossbows have a reload of one, which means that you have to load the crossbow with one action as well. Got so it would be one action to draw it, one action to load it, one action to fire. But you can do that. Okay. Does a 19 hit? Uh, not. Oh, yeah. 19 hits. Yes. Okay, good. I was afraid. Aha, <laughs> <laughs> uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Seven plus my... Uh, eight damage. Okay, uh, you I think it takes place aim. a bolt right the thing to, as as Gristle's like, hey, do you want to capture this thing or whatever? Uh, and then this bolt comes sailing out of the darkness and pierces right through this oh. cobalt's eye, and uh, it's like, ah, 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 and as the the cries echo into the cave and there's silence that falls, you just hear a quiet, oops, from Ingot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it dead. It dead. Yay. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh dang uh in in england uh that's uh okay well i guess we're not gonna you know i just threw it out there if we wanted to <laughs> question, question the last one or if it even speaks a, a regular language that any of us could understand yes, perhaps next time speak a little louder so everyone can hear you because i i would have much preferred that outcome uh, okay to be fair i was yelling at my gristle voice thank you very much and your first thing didn't work either so mm, there's that Oh, oh, uh, and Waverly remembers and picks up the torch. <laughs> uh, I, I want to grab my dagger out of the body of the. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool, absolutely. I lose it. You gather up all your all your stuff. Uh, these creatures were carrying spears, which crude enough that they probably wouldn't be great. Like they're not something that you would find in a blacksmith shop, but they are spears. They they work if you, anybody wanted to take one. Um, Ingot has had a bad experience taking weapons off of corpses and is not eager to repeat that. <laughs> I'll take a spear. Sure. Uh, spears are weapons that you can throw with an increment of 20 feet. They deal 1d6 damage, uh, and it's piercing damage plus your strength modifier. Okay. Well, now I have this flimsy looking spear. We've got a damaged rogue. And uh, actually, how are we all doing? Or do we need to take a knee? Yes. I feel like you all got kind of beat up a little bit there. Uh, yes. Um, who needs any sort of medical attention? Now, be honest, because last time I almost didn't, I was not honest, and I, I probably would have been dead by now. But, uh... <laughs> Ingot has still sustained injuries from the previous fight. Oh, yes. Yeah. See? Yes. Yes, you're okay, or yes, you need medical attention. That was a yes responding to you saying my name, but oh. I am in fact bleeding, yes. Oh, gather round, <laughs> gather round. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to use my last heal oh. <laughs> for the day and heal all of us. Um, okay. Now I did see I was I was keeping an eye on the chat and it does look like our question about how heal works specifically was answered. And when you use all three actions, it does just deal one D eight base hit points. So one D eight hit points when you use all three. You only get those extra eight hit points when you use the two action version. Mm. Ah. Uh, but does the two action version allow you to hit more than one person? One target. So okay. you're either you're either giving everybody a little bit or you're giving one person a lot. I'm you could always heal, heal him, and I can drink my potion. I need healing too, so I'm gonna heal us all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a little bit, and I can always do medicine checks on top of that, right? If you've got some healers' tools, yeah. I do. I do. All right, here we go. <gasps> For a second, I thought it was a one. It's a seven. We get seven. Hey, that's pretty special. good. That's full. Yeah. Same for me. The how are you looking? I'm good. I'll be good. <laughs> I don't have a scratch on me. Pretty here. proud of myself. Uh, uh, do you as... want one? No, no. I'm just really good at defending myself. What can I say? <laughs> Armor, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, never. Wait, 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 Waverly. That's your name. Uh, yes. Do you need to rest a little here to uh, regain some of your magic powers? I don't know exactly how they work or anything, but I assume napping or sitting or having a cup of tea for plunges is your magic. I don't know. Well, no, I do need a full um, eight hours of rest. Oh, goodness. But I do not want to hinder this quest that we're on. Um, we do have someone waiting on us to, to find out what happened to the fish. So, um, please. Oh, she's probably, that the elf, she's probably taking a nap right now. Like, she does not care what time we come out of here, I'm pretty sure. The longer we take, the more time whoever stole these things gets away. Grisly. Oh, right. Ingot looks down at the wounds that have, like, knit up on his skin and looks up at you, Waverly. Perhaps we could use your abilities to heal something else. And he points down at one of, like, the less damaged kobolds. Mm, Are any I, of them were, were able uh, to be saved? Um, to be honest, they're all dead. Uh oh. I was going to say, uh, I would have probably healed them if it's a 30 -40. Yeah, it would have. it would have already worked on them. Ah. Never mind. Uh, well, I mean, what I've learned of this little adventure so far is if there's bodies, you should probably poke them. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to search <laughs> the bodies, please. 
Um, aside from their spears, uh, they don't appear to have a whole lot else of value. You do notice two odd things, though. One, which maybe isn't so odd, but kind of illuminates perhaps a little bit of what happened, is um, some of them are carrying like uh, one or two fish that they're wearing on their belt. Uh, you would guess they just carry them around. Like like one of the fish has like a big bite taken out of it. Um, they just carry them around and eat them. Uh, it's very likely that these are, the, are, are some of the very fish that were taken from the Otari fishery. Um, so it looks like these kobolds may be the ones responsible for that very theft. Uh, however, um, grand total, maybe four fish. So it's not like you found the whole stash and can call it job over. We found the culprits. Our job is over. <laughs> oh. Crystal, I thought that was obvious. They were sawing at something. They have fish. They have crude tools. They dig. What? Nothing. It go. You're you right, also find that each of them is wearing it's not it, it's it's like at first you're thinking of some kind of pendant but it's not stone and it's not you're not even sure what the heck it is it's some weird like it's hard let but it has like a scaly texture to it um you could make a nature check or somebody else could if you wanted to yeah, i think ingot is intrigued by these i could too I'm more curious about what they were sawing to get into. Yes, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Only a seven, though. Okay. Me too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Same <-sies. laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, you're not quite certain. They're, they're all wearing these weird, irregular little pendants that almost like maybe it's like a chipped stone or something it, it's really difficult to identify what it is it has a very um strange texture but it does have almost like a scaly pattern to it mm -hmm. um you can't quite tell what it is but while you guys are examining all that uh fee you are looking at this barred caged off area of the room and it does look like there is actually like a door like it's it's almost like a, a caged storage area uh, and there are some there, there's like a there's a chest back there it looks like there's a, a lock that is still that that kept these these kobolds out. Um, they were attempting to just pry their way through, so they probably didn't have the proper tools for getting through such a lock. Uh, yeah. You guys could attempt to the the very same thing, trying to just pry your way open. But if you have a more elegant solution, such as thieves' tools and a thievery check, you'd like to make, mm. you could do it. I think they wanted that chest in there. Oh, that's what you meant. Okay, I just, I don't know if the fish seemed like we were done, but... Uh, oh, I, I was. I wanted you to feel like you had a victory, because when I agree with you, then you stop debating with me. That is a true statement. I cannot uh, argue against it. <laughs> All right, well, uh, you're, you're a cool rogue fifi person, and you want to get that chest and see what's going on in there? There's, like, some mystery we're unraveling. <laughs> You're weird, but I'll give it a try. I am super normal. You're weird. Do <laughs> you want the chest? I don't really care about. I mean, you know, I I think we found the fish, and nah, 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 if, nah, nah, if nah. Is, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look. Um, I want to make sure that like there's nothing weird about this lock as well. Like it's a normal lock. It's yeah. not something that's gonna trigger something when I try to sure. pick it. Very wise uh, mm -hmm. for this one. I'm going to make a secret perception check. Okay. Um, so why don't you just tell me what your perception bonus is? It is five. Five. Okay. You give the chest, or the, the not the chest, the, uh, the lock a once over. Um, it looks old. Um, it's a little rusty. Uh, yeah. But it doesn't appear to be sabotaged or trapped in any way. You think it might be cool. okay. Okay. I'm going to try to pick the, pick the lock on the thing. Okay. Pull out your thieves tools uh, and start working at the lock. Go ahead and make me a thievery check. All right. That is a, a thievery, thievery check. check. There you go. Of 21. 21. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, this this lock is old, 15 plus. Uh, outdated, and in poor repair. You easily uh, get the tumblers in place, and you hear that satisfying click. That means you can swing this door wide open. Swing the door open. Okay. You now have access to this caged off 
storage area. Is it so? Is this chest the main thing of interest? Are there like they're like boxes or anything else as well yeah. in here? So, so giving it a cursory glance, uh, you start looking around. It does look like there were some. There's a lot of things that were stored here, but most of it's like yeah. rotted and broken and useless and like moth-eaten cloth yeah. and you know moldy, you know ancient maybe flour or something that who knows okay. what it is. It's just a, basically just a pile of mold at this point. Uh, but there is this chest. Um, doesn't even appear to have a lock on it, but it does look to be mostly intact. Open the chest. <laughs> yeah. Open that up, and inside you see you see a wonderful sight: glittering coins, two hundred silver pieces. Uh, lying on top of that, you see a short sword, and that sword is etched with a rune, and near the hilt um, that glows with a very, very subtle violet light. Uh, as as you as you first lay eyes on it, there is also a golden ring. You would guess that something like that you could probably get, you know, five six gold pieces for. Now the um, the two hundred silver pieces. Uh, it works on a. It's a. It's a. It, it's ten <laughs> copper to a silver, ten silver to a gold mm -hmm. uh, type of economy. So it's about. It's a pretty good haul. Two hundred silver is a pretty good haul. About twenty total gold pieces, yeah. um, more than you're getting paid for this job. So pretty solid. If I wasn't a man of my word, I would take this and run. <laughs> <sighs> And I'm going to pull the chest out. So there is plenty of interest in here. Oh. Uh, do you think any of it's like zombie curse stuff that we should not touch or? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick up the short I sword. I want to examine the area for any sort of uh, signs of a tomb or a corpse or like it. There does not appear to be any kind of, you know, sarcophagus or tomb or burial spot for anybody. Then I'll I'm going to wave right the short away. sword. Oh, 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 waving at a gristle. It is not a part of any sort of tomb or, or burial ritual or anything of the sort. Um, just to, as a note, Ingot is going to pocket one of the amulets with the strange, like, scaly rock. Yeah. Uh, and is going to take one. But as this sword is being brandished about, he's going to go over to it. Uh, Ingot would like to take a look from afar. And he would like to do an arcana check on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a very common rune. I'm not even going to have you roll anything for okay. it. Um, very common rune. Uh, you detect the presence of magic on the blade. Uh, this is your very first magic item, or uh, magic weapon, uh -huh. plus one short sword. Nice. Now, plus one, uh, means that when you roll an attack, you add one to the result. It does not deal any extra damage. However, um, over a long enough time period, theoretically, that translates some damage because it makes getting crits just that much easier. So, mm -hmm. plus one to attack with this short sword, your first magic weapon. Ingot takes a look at the runes, and you can see he's not touching the sword, but he's sort of running his, his fingers over the, over the glowing runes. This short sword will grant the user some agility and accuracy. Well, who here is the worst at hitting things? Because it's not me. Plus, I just picked up this cool <laughs> spear, so. That might be Ingot. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, actually, Ingot, thank you for saying your name out loud. Easier to remember your name that way. I, uh, it's good you should take it because you were trying previously to be to be mighty and and stab things and crossbow things. I I saw you trying there, so. Ingot was very good at the crossbow. You were, yes, good, good, good boy, Ingot. Uh, no, okay, well, good, good, uh, yes, good try. Ingot appreciates your attempt at leadership. You, the... you always have to say things that way, but go mm. ahead. <clears throat> The may Ingot possess this short sword? I suppose. And he'll take the bottom of his robe, still like afraid to touch it, and sort of handles it like an oven mitt. <laughs> <laughs> Puts it, it in his bag. Very nice. Uh, are there other magical items in there? Did anyone notice or just... No, the sword appeared to be the only thing uh, that you noticed was magical ink. Okay. No other magic. There's a ring in there, but meh. Vince. Well, if nobody wants it, then we could sell it and split the bounty once we get back to the surface. 
Or we could leave it here in case there's a ghost who really wants his cool ring back or something. I don't know how it looks. Look, I don't know how far apart a ghost has to be from the stuff to get it back. But you know, I, if, if we go we, down this corridor and there's more, there's more ghost stuff, then we'll have to give back the ring, right? We, we might do better if we hold it here. That way, we do not have to carry it, and it stays in the chest. It's a ring. It's like tiny. I meant the server as well, Grisel. Sorry, the what? The server. Oh, this. I'm sorry. <laughs> It, the silver can't be that heavy. How heavy? How heavy is this much silver? I don't even know. Uh, I I typically don't get into the nitty gritty <laughs> of like coin carrying. So like you, it, it's you know. Well, if you can carry, it has it, weight, but it's it's fine. You okay. can carry the silver. Um. You know, well, if you can't carry it, the I surely can put it on my in my pack. It's not a big deal. But I promise, on on a warrior's <laughs> honor, I will split it with the whole party when we get to the surface. <laughs> If we all make it out of here. Oh, you lie a lot. I don't need any of that, but thank you. Grissel also always has to put things that way. Thank you all for answering questions really delayed. <laughs> uh, first of all, see, Lowry, I do not lie. I'm just really confused, like, most of the time. But I'm learning. And uh, anyway, yes, I'll split it up with you all. Or, you know, whatever. Maybe we can just have a nice meal together. I don't know. I'm just going to carry it. It seems like a waste to leave for the, the kobolds to get. Hey, eh? Agree? Agree? Oh, yes, yes. Agreed. No objections. Look at you, Fee. <laughs> just a Shake. side note. The kobolds wouldn't come because the only other way is the way that we would be going. But yes, that's fine. Uh, Yeah, yep. Mm, logic. I like it. So, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, those kobolds were trying to get in here with, like, their hands and spears, so... Whose stuff is this? Doesn't matter. Well, it looks like it very old. Like, a there's, bit. like, a lot of the stuff looks like it's been down here for a okay. long, long time. Does the, not on the box, it doesn't say, like, property of, like, <laughs> Garfield, <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> you, you don't get the feeling that, like, somebody up top right. on the surface is like, hmm, yes, I'm gonna go down beneath the fishery and put my... 200 silver pieces. A lot of people box. bury gold, Jim. A lot of people I, I'm gold. not saying that it's out of the question. I'm just saying you don't get the feeling from this situation okay. that that's the case. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Ingot's going to look around. Is there another uh, like entrance or exit into this place? It does look like there is. So, so on the same wall, that northern wall of the chamber, you guys came in through a tunnel, but there is a door near there. Uh, oh. so, so not too far from where you came in, there is another exit that goes somewhere. It's an actual door. Fee, perhaps this warrants examination. And he'll point at the door. I'll take a look. And I'll, yeah, I'll go over and look over the door. Sure. Uh, I'll make another secret perception check for you. And uh, you are fairly certain that the door itself uh, is all right. It doesn't appear to be locked, and it doesn't appear to be dangerous in any way. Okay. Uh, can I lean my ear against the door to see if I can listen to, like, the other side? Yep. Uh, I'll make another, I'll go ahead and make another check for you. Um, you don't hear anything on the other side. Uh, the door is pretty thick and heavy, so that could, could be it, but you don't get the sense that there's anything going on on the other side of the door. I don't hear anything so far. What is Thee's plan? I have a question for your question. Yes. Waverly, can I kill things? Well, that depends on the thing. I mean, do you, if you were asking me if you could just kill one of us right now, I would wholeheartedly say no. But if you were to open that door and we are threatened by a creature or person and they are armed and angry, then perhaps... I have a second question. Do you think it is a possibility I would try to kill one of you? <laughs> it was really just a hypothetical. But d d d do you, Waverly? Oh, no. I then think we're you all only becoming had... very good friends. Then it was not a question that even needed to be asked. But you did the asking. I did the answering. You, you, you answered with a question. Hmm. Well, I was saying, um, 
You can do killing when necessary. Not that you wouldn't, but I don't know. Perhaps that is something you enjoy. But I am getting to know you better, uh, and I do fear, uh, I do feel that um, perhaps you will, I don't know. Um, now you're confusing me. <gasps> okay. I kill when necessary. And the gestures I was doing for all of you was not saying to kill them. I was saying there are things that we will have to attack oh. in the room. Oh. I tried to convey that. I don't think it was understood on the other party's end. Oh, okay, first of all, can't blame me for that. I think there was more than one person confused about the hand signals. Like I said, we gotta communicate and practice that next time later. Oh, yes. Ingrid has a question. Is the door a push or a pull? Uh, it looks like a pull. Well, <laughs> it looks like a pull. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Perhaps we should move. Let's go. I'll open it. Okay. Opening it, you see there is a short hallway. Uh, bu 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 uh that. Uh, it looks like at the end of the hallway, there's some kind of chamber, uh, but it's it's dark. I mean, until you, if you get closer, it'll be difficult to see any details in there. But there is a hallway uh, with a tiled floor in front of you. Well, Ingot still has light, right? Ingot does still have light, yeah. But I'm saying the, the hallway is long enough that um, yeah. you can't quite see into the chamber in the next room. Okay. Ingot, will you do me a favor? Of course. Will you stand at the front of the door? And, and get, we'll pop into position. I have been in many hallways. Hmm. Long hallways. Half the time is bad. Hmm. And I would not want any of our companions to be injured by a lack of attentiveness. And he's like biting his tongue as he's <laughs> speaking. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... Can, can I hear that? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's not secret. It uh, is. Um, yes, uh, yes, a little Beverly sometimes gets herself in a pickle if she's not looking around. You know how it is. Crystal, please shut up before <laughs> I ask you to go first. <laughs> oh, are we looking for someone to go first? No, no. I have no fear. No, oh, should, so you were no. going to ask me to go first? No, I'm going to look for traps. <laughs> Good God, I'm about to let them go. Oh, we start making your way down the hallway, uh, uh, <laughs> scanning the floor, may knowing that your own safety is on the line. So at least there's some personal benefit to this, as satisfying as it would be to watch them get get smacked in the head by something. Uh, <gasps> your perception bonus is five, correct? Yes. Okay. So you're making your way down the hallway very slowly, very carefully, probably muttering under your breath about these these fools behind you. Uh, when you notice that one of the tiles in the floor is a little bit loose and you get down uh, real close to the floor, floor to inspect and you see that it is designed to actually be a hidden pressure plate but what it does and what horrors it will unleash upon you, we will have to find out after our break because we are going to take, oh. a few... we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to take a couple. We're going to go get some snacks and I don't know, just hang out for a minute. Uh, we, we will be back for the second half of our adventure in just a few. So stick around. We'll see you then. Get us out of here. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them.
We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. On a real night of gaming, you bounce from a core rule book to the advanced player's guide, and of course your character sheet. But what if? We created a single book specifically tailored for your character class with a massive character sheet to record every detail of your hero. And then took all the official Pathfinder rules, spells, feats, and skills that you need for your class and your class only and combined that with an expansive journal to capture your story. Character sheet, rule book, journal, all in one. The Complete Character Chronicle is live on Kickstarter now. Time as you explore the packed worlds of the Starfinder universe, taking on the role of a science fantasy hero customized to fit your playstyle. But danger lurks amongst the stars. Will you fight back with advanced weaponry and cunning tactics, or will your hero wield the devastating forces that fuse magic and technology together to alter reality? Your crew must come together if you have any hope of victory. 
In Starfinder, every decision drives the adventure as you build an epic saga with your friends. Bring your story to life in a game where the fate of the worlds rests on the answer to the most important question of all. What do you do? Begin your journey into the Starfinder universe today with the Starfinder Beginner Box, now available at paizo.com, your local gaming store, and anywhere else adventure can be found. Hey, you're on the dungeon. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, <laughs> hey. They just, just popped right back in. There we are. Hello. How are you? It's the second half of our episode of Troubles in Otari. You're so smooth, Jim. Uh, Look at you. Like, it's, we're ready. It's to, cool. We're ready. To, and I'm so smooth that you don't even know. <laughs> you know. That's the thing. I'm so smooth. We're live. We're back. We're ready for more adventure. Uh, the, the heroes, the, the hero uh, just discovered a trap, a trap that he's probably half tempted to allow his companions to stumble into. Will he be a good enough friend to disable it for them? Or will he just tell them the coast is clear? Let's find out. Let's check in with everybody else. <laughs> Why would he like one? You gotta stop making loaded <laughs> questions, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, all right, we're back at it. Uh, Again, the as I had mentioned, you had just discovered that one of these tiles is actually a pressure plate. What exactly it is for, you're not certain, but you know that it can't be anything good. It is precisely the reason you decided to go first, and it's a good thing you did. You can use your thieves' tools uh, and a thievery check to attempt to disable this pressure plate and thus thwart it. Uh, the good news is that if you fail, you could just keep trying. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that if you critically fail, mm -hmm. well, don't. Don't critically fail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you let's, do? Let's try and disable it. Sure. Go at it. Uh, you get the thieves tools out. You start picking at the edges. See if you could jam this pressure plate in so it won't react to your weight. What'd you get? Uh, eight plus six. So that is a 14. 14. Uh, the rest of you, you can see if he, he, he sort of bends down and he starts messing with something on the floor. Uh, he looks very intent on his work. And after about a minute of working, uh, you still have not quite gotten it, Fee. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's a little bit more intricate than you first gave it credit for. Uh, are any of the rest of you do anything while this is happening? So Ingot has sort of seen this happen before with Thee, and he's going to take his position that he told him to stay in uh, and then extend a hand to uh, signal to the others to like to stop and wait. And, uh, and then motion for the torch light to sort of move forward and he's going to guide waverly to sort of give her the best angle so that the mm -hmm. has enough light Perfect. so now the as you're doing this very delicate work everybody is looming right over your shoulder <laughs> which makes it probably no. way easier to focus <laughs> and concentrate <laughs> and go ahead and make another thievery check illuminating 17 mm -hmm. 17. Uh, it, it's uh, maybe that's exactly what you needed. Maybe the peer pressure was just enough. Uh, you, you mess with it just a little bit more uh, and you manage to uh, uh, wedge one of your tools up under the plate and, and sort of jam it in place. Uh, you test it a few times. You, you feel like you feel like just walking over it is no longer a threat. All right, we should be good to go forward. Ingot starts applauding. <laughs> Thank you, Ingot. Most impressive. Thank you, Grissom. <clears throat> Let Waverly. us go. <laughs> yes. Waverly, do you have anything to say anything to the? To say to oh, yes. Oh, it was quite impressive. I'm sorry. I was very distracted. Um, <laughs> making sure that the the torchlight was angled properly so that you could see what you were doing. You did fantastic. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, great job, Beverly. Just make sure you mind your P's and Q's on this adventure, okay? Yes. <clears throat> so you all move forward uh, out of this hallway and into a small chamber that contains an old wooden... Or, sorry. Uh, you move into a chamber that... Um, it's a fairly long, uh, wider room. It's a little bit bigger than some of the spaces that you've been in. There are two stone statues of priests that stand in the corners along one side of the room, facing a towering, larger statue of a man holding out both of his hands with their palms up. In front of this statue is a stone altar holding nine gold coins. There are two exits from this room, really close to one another. The first is on the north wall, almost directly across from the door that you came in, and the other is just to the right of that door on the western wall, or the eastern wall. There is a uh, plaque near the statue uh, that says, In my hands I judge the value of all wealth, raising up whichever is greater. One of these coins is a deception. Find it using only two judgments and receive my blessing. What do you guys do? What does that plaque say? Let's see. It says. Yeah. Not just uh, in character. <laughs> I got you. Um, Beverly, what, uh, my eyes are... If, uh, d you have the light. Let me know what that says. And, uh, I'll report back. Uh, oh, okay. I'll get a little closer to it. Huh? You can just say you did it, but... Uh, <laughs> um... Beverly or Waverly. Gosh, I'm, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get over it. Now you're Beverly forever. Oh no! Uh, Waverly says, "In my hands, I judge the value of all wealth, raising up whichever is greater. One of these coins is deception. Finding it, find it using only two judgments and receive my blessing. Uh, you can, if you would like, also make a religion check. Can do. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, it is very clear to you." looking up at the statue, that this is a representation of Abadar, the god of wealth. Oh, the god of wealth. Interesting. And there mm. are coins there, right? Yep. There, there's this altar before the stone statue, nine coins in all. Uh, Ingot is going to go look over at the coins. Do they seem like earthly gold? Yeah, or I like want to look at the coins. Uh, yeah. Make a make a perception check. Okay. I'd That's like to look at the six. coins too, as a mm -hmm. someone who steals money and looks at it probably pretty uh -huh. often. Uh, the coins appear to all have a small etching uh, of a number one through nine, uh, oh. and they all appear to be otherwise identical. So there's there's coins one through nine, uh, but they are otherwise identical. You have no like there's no inkling that one of them is not real so it it with a 16 for perception it, like are they all the same all the same type of metal i guess yeah they're all they're all otherwise they look like normal gold coins okay they don't look like they uh aside from the fact that they don't bear like uh like they don't they don't they don't bear like a stamp from any nation that you've ever heard of they don't they don't appear to be marked in any other way except that they are numbered do they all weigh the same? They all, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, they 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 feel, uh, look, uh, smell the same. You would guess each one of them from a cursory examination was just a gold coin. Mm. Well, In Ingot holds up the crystal for his detect magic, like a jeweler's like loop, and it's just is any magic coming out of them? Uh, you don't detect the presence of any magic no. in the room or anything. No. Okay. Abadar is the god of wealth. And since these coins are sitting here right in front of him, perhaps we're supposed to give him some sort of offering. Mm. Mm. Perhaps one of us should try to place a coin in his hand. Okay, perhaps. I throw one in. Oh, one in the right okay. hand. Uh, just for kicks and giggles, pick a number one through nine. <laughs> nine. Nine. Go big, okay. go home. <laughs> you grab the, the the coin with the nine etched on its surface. You place it in uh, in one of the statue's hands, and that hand rises up into the air. Does so the what? other hand move at all? No, it just it it, it just yeah. One hand rises. Um, the other hand just remains the same. Hmm. Oh, 
that, he that must he be likes a it. Good thing. Yes. Um. Maybe we should try more, and and add a coin one by one to see if he uh, accepts this offering. Hmm. What was the hint about like the two something? Oh, two yes. or more than the rest. So is this a math question? Oh no, it's a math question. <laughs> oh, you're right, Gristle. That's quite smart. I have forgotten about that. Yes, perhaps two are not what they seem, and perhaps he will reject them. Ingot picks up the coin that has the number two. Hmm? Perhaps the coin that is two is not what it seems. Wait, before we do anything else, is his hand too high for us to reach out and grab the coin? No, you, again? you could theoretically reach it if you wanted to. Okay, yeah. I'm going to reach up, I'm going to grab the coin. Okay, and I'm gonna hand the it hand it. lowers so that they're both even again. I'm going to hand it to Thee. We know he's accepted this one. Can you hold on to it? Sure. And like, I'll hand over the number two coin. To the oh, statue? Okay. And I'll, yeah. Okay. You place it on the statue, and the number two coin rises up. Um, and then there is a, a booming voice that calls out and says, Name the deception. Oh. Oh, no. About what? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Mm. Um, number two? Well. Number two. Uh... Mm, incorrect. Uh -huh. All of the coins, <gasps> even the one that Thea is holding, suddenly vanish. Oh. And then, in the blink of an eye, there is a pile of nine coins sitting on the altar. I'll reset. <laughs> okay. Both hands now even. It's clear that we cannot try and test out each coin. Do or you suppose we two ahead. at a time? Two at a time. I was thinking three, half and half, and we put um, in each hand since we only have two chances to get it right. Well, we know that number two and number nine are both positive. If we put two coins in these hands and they're both positive, that means the one that was not is the deception. If one reads as negative, or both read as negative, perhaps they are the deceptions. Do you suppose that the deception coin changes <gasps> each time we try? Ingot did not think of this. Only one way to find out, put in the two again. Okay. You place two, uh, the, the number two coin on one of the hands and it rises up into the air. I think we put two and nine, right? I I only put in two because I was seeing if the oh. number two was going to change it again. I throw nine in. Okay, you put number. Do you put it on the same hand or do you put it on the other hand? Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> same hand, same hand. Same hand. Okay, uh, you place that coin on the upraised hand. It remains upraised, upraised, and then you hear a booming voice that says, "Name the deception." Crystal, just pick a number. Uh. Seven. Seven? Correct. <laughs> All of the coins disappear except for the number seven. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's so cute. Which? <laughs> I'm so sorry. You could have lied, Jim. <laughs> you should have lied to us. <laughs> All the coins on the altar vanish, including the ones in the stand. The only one that is left is the one marked number seven. Oh no. Which, which now appears to be nothing but a simple circle of lead. <laughs> Rizzle, do you, you've done do it. You, do you think if we do this puzzle again with all the coins we found in the other room, something cool will happen? Should we do that too? I literally have no idea what to think. <laughs> <laughs> Just said it. Okay. <laughs> what if I said at the beginning? <laughs> Are you actually a genius? <laughs> um, of course I am, V. I've been telling you that the whole time. Oh yes, God. but I like am starting to believe it. <laughs> That's cool by me, I, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm like crying. I'm crying. <laughs> um. um 
does anything uh, else happen? Sorry, yeah, there's probably more stuff. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reset. I didn't expect you just guess. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so there, uh, it looks like the, uh, you actually hear a, a, it sounds like a, a loud, like metallic clanking sound. Um, and then the door that is on the Eastern wall uh, near the Northern side of the chamber actually like pops open just a little bit. Oh, Ooh, you've unlocked a secret door. Those are always very fascinating. Perhaps we'll find another ancient tomb behind the door. Oh God, I hope not, Jesus. <clears throat> well, okay, if I've learned anything, and I think I am learning something because I got that puzzle right so quickly. Uh, uh, Thee, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors, you're quite talented at what you do, checking for <clears throat> traps and whatnot. I will look again, yes. Thank you. And I'll check around for traps. Just sure. as a note, Ingot is going to take that <coughs> lead, the uh, lead coin as well. It still doesn't have the etching of a seven, right? Uh, it still does. Okay. You're looking around, Thee, and you're fairly certain that it's safe to proceed. Okay. Uh, I also want to look around the rest of this room to make sure there's nothing we missed. It doesn't look like there is anything thing. else. Um, there's no. no sign of the coins that vanished. Uh, the only one, again, that was left was the one that was the, the named false one. Okay. Okay. It looks like there are no traps. I think we may be good. How do we want to proceed? Uh, uh, I'll go in first this time. I don't think we should let uh, Beverly go in all the time with her torch. It's uh, apparently not the greatest thing we've done today. I'm going to switch go... to my short bow. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, um, yeah. So this this chamber that sort of popped open after Gristle solved the puzzle of the deceive, deception, deceptive coin uh, is a very small one. Uh, it contains only an old wooden chest emblazoned with the symbol of a key. Um, Waverly, you seeing this, uh, immediately recognize that as a, a symbol um, uh, closely associated with Habadar's worship. Behind the chest, there is a massive contraption of gears and pulleys that looks like the inner workings of some unseen device. There are also tiny shafts of light coming through the northern wall from small holes. It perhaps a way to peer into the undiscovered chamber and scope out any dangers in the room to the north. What do you guys do? The pulley like mechanism, can I examine yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you have craft, you can sort of try to see if you can figure out what that does. I have pretty good crafting, actually. Sure, go I'm for a it. a dwarf. Uh, 19. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know that this is the activation mechanism for some kind of trap. Uh, <sighs> and looking at like the way that the pulleys are arranged and the way things are set in the wall, you would guess that it actually would activate a trap uh, in the other room, the, the room to the north of where you are that you haven't actually seen into yet. Ingrid um, thinks that we are, and he taps the machine, behind the scenes. That's exactly what it feels like. You guys are backstage, so to speak. Uh, currently, this trap is deactivated, but it looks like you could very simply flip some levers and activate it. What if do you mean behind have... the scenes of what? The other room right there, or just? It seems we have discovered the mechanisms for these traps. Oh, so we twist the knob and the traps, uh, go boom or they turn off or how do you know which thing does what i twist the knob <laughs> yeah uh you 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 pull some levers and yeah, there's or crank like it some, or some of the ropes begin to shift and move there's a it's actually surprisingly uh well you don't know if maintained is the right word because the room doesn't look like it's been disturbed in a long time but like uh it all seems to operate very efficiently and you know that you you have activated you're not quite sure exactly what it'll do but something probably pretty dangerous in the next room has been activated <laughs> do you know what you've just done ingot has no idea <laughs> that could be quite troublesome later on probably, probably. 
Is there anywhere we could look? Because uh, you mentioned there was like a curtain. Oh yeah, there's the, the whole like this room is actually like actually pretty well lighted because there are there are lots of shafts of light coming from all these holes in the wall. Right. Uh, put your eye right up next to one, and you can see into a much larger chamber. Uh, that is just, it's probably through that other door that is currently unopened. Uh, you see, it looks like you're looking into some kind of an audience hall. Uh, on one side, there is a broad set of stairs leading to where a throne may once have stood, but now stands empty. There are a lot of pillars supporting a very high ceiling. Uh, and the ruined tatters of once decorative banners still hang from these pillars. There are also a number of these little creatures, these kobolds, uh, much like the ones that you fought down in the storage room. And they all appear to be lounging about, uh, gnawing on raw fish and chatting amongst one another. And they have not noticed us? <laughs> oh, no, again, you guys are, again, behind the scenes. Sure, sure. Um, they, That's just they great. They have no idea you're there. They're, they're, they believe that they're all by themselves. There's more of them through here. Oh no. Ingot, um, do you remember how you twisted that lever? Yes. If you do it again, will you be deactivating something? Ingot could try, and I'll. I want crank him it. to do it while I'm looking through. Sure, yeah. Uh, when you, uh, when you do that, go ahead and Waverly, I'll have you make a perception check for me. Okay. That's going to be a 22. Oh, nice. Okay. So you watch, uh, and you're paying very close attention, and you notice that there are some similar holes to the one that you're looking through, but on the far western wall of this room that that close when Ingot deactivates the trap. Uh, it's all very subtle and very quiet, only because you're specifically looking for it that you notice it. Uh, these kobolds have no idea it's anything's happening on my end you kind of cut out you said it was a door no like tiny holes in the wall tiny holes in the wall very similar to the one that you're looking through now but on but on the western wall, you're you're basically looking on you're you're on the southern wall of this room and on the western wall these these other holes open and close when ingot manipulates the device oh i'm noticing that on the other side of the room you're manipulating some form of a uh, uh, hole in the wall, and they open and close as you spin that thing. Should it get keep them open or closed? I'm not quite sure. I don't know what they do. Open then. You <clears throat> set the device, and uh, Waverly, you sort of double check, and yeah, the, the holes are open. It's active. It's open. Hmm. Ingot looks between Thee and Gristle, and it's just like, do I ask for advice or do what to do? Uh, yes, and he just um, stands in it. Waverly kind of sees uh, Ingot's confusion and, and tries to help him out a little bit. Uh, uh, yes, um, Thee, have you ever encountered something, uh, a contraption like this before? Uh like dm is this something that i have experience with um you could make a i would allow a thievery check if you want sure. to try to more closely identify exactly what's happening 18 Ooh. 18 uh your best guess sort of piecing together you know waverly's pointed out the holes you see the way they open and close you would guess that there is some kind of perhaps another pressure plate somewhere in the next room mm -hmm. that would activate a a defense mechanism of some kind Probably something shoots out of those holes. Somebody steps wrong in that room when it's active, and they get they get a bolt to the an arrow in the eye, or or something nasty happens. Most likely, there are projectiles in that wall to the west. Something triggers it, and then they shoot out across the room to the east. So there's a possibility that if you can lure the cold bolts to move or to get something to get their attention, they may trigger the trap and kill themselves. Well. Based upon events from earlier today, um, I don't think attempting to speak with them is the best course of action here. Um, does is anyone I know uh, many of you are proficient with the bow? Um, is it are these holes wide enough here to perhaps attempt to 
shoot through even them. Even with a cursory back. glance, you could see there would be no way to shoot through them accurately. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, how long? Maybe we should watch them and see what they're doing. I mean, if they're gonna hang out in here for like five minutes and go to bed, problem solved. <laughs> but if, uh, I mean, what, what are they doing? What is this room for? We can literally. Good. Do you see any fish, Waverly? Oh, yes. Many. Ah. Problem solved. Okay, so these are the these are the bad people we were looking for that stole the fish and are doing something else weird, but uh, uh Inget is gonna go over and lightly sort of touch the wall with the holes in it that are that's on our side. Does it seem yeah. something that's like easily breakable? Um and you don't think that it would be very easy to break through the wall. The oh. wall itself is still pretty solid. Um, the holes are more like uh, there, there's not so many of them that that you could just like bust through. May I make a suggestion? Mm. Who here do you think is the loudest? Gristle. Definitely Gristle. <laughs> Obviously me. What about <laughs> it? Um, Gristle, if you make a sharp yelling sound since they cannot see where we are they may start to walk around the room in doing so they may trigger the trap it stops us from activating it and it might also cut our problems in half potentially literally what if they just go through the door that's connected to this room to look for you know what i'm you know what i'm saying is there a door is there a door that goes from where you are to there they are i thought there was no you would have to go back out into the uh. into the puzzle chamber uh, oh, okay, so our our access. room is sort of hidden. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's relatively close, but it's not direct access. That sounds like a really great idea. Uh, maybe we should close this door, unless we have to resolve the puzzle to open it again. I don't know how this works. So we could attempt to close the door. Okay, uh, let's close. Just you know, let's close the door. I'm gonna yell. Just you know, otherwise they're gonna walk out that door, see this door is open, come right in here, and then we're Fish in the barrel. <laughs> but fun. you you realize how much walking that would have to be to go all the way around if they heard a noise behind them. Sure don't. Um, but let's try anyway. Mm. We're going with your plan, so don't be displeased. I think it's I'm a good one. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, sorry, I was trying, nice. I was trying to make an alternate plan. Uh, okay, whatever. I just, okay, here I go! And I just put my mouth up next to one of the slots. <laughs> and I go, okay. Sharp yelling noises! <laughs> okay. Of course you do. Uh, <laughs> you, you yell the words, sharp yelling noises. At this point, you see that all of the kobolds in that room, um, like perk up. They grab spears next to them. Uh, one of them uh, appears to be a little bit bigger. Uh, its leathers seem to be a little bit more put together. It's wearing a little bit more jewelry than some of the others. Uh, it starts like shouting orders in this weird barking language that you can't quite recognize. And some of his underlings begin uh, moving closer to the door that would lead them to that room with the statues uh, and the puzzle was. And as they step out into the middle of the floor, there is this and two, three spears come flying from the Western wall and arc their way across the room directly at these kobolds. I'll have Ingot roll, t roll me two D20s and just tell me what you get on the die. Okay. Okay, a 15 and a 17. Okay, yeah, both of these spears just cool, cool, yes. lodge themselves in kobold chests. Go ahead and roll me uh, 2d8 now. 2d8. And give me, the, give me the total separate. Okay. Six total. Uh, each one separate. Sorry? Oh, each, I see, I see each, what she's saying. Each d8 separately. Six for one and and six for the other. Good. Okay. So these kobolds get <laughs> blasted back. Uh, they're lying on the ground. They're still moving, uh, but like weakly, like they they 
rip these spears out of their out of their shoulders the other kobolds in the room are just like frantic now they're screaming the one that was shouting orders is now yelling out uh and they're all like diving behind pillars you can see this all happening um and they're all just like they've got spears in hands they're huddled down they're hunkered in what do you guys do that's just funny <laughs> oh no. I, I mean it worked to go in there. Uh ooh, ooh. Um I wonder how long we can hang out in this room until they're not on guard to fight us. <laughs> I I don't think we have much to worry about them being on guard. Like d- are they going to be unaware or half of them are bleeding? I one only leads to the other anyways. Ingot feels that now is our chance. Wait, before anything happens, we cannot enter that room if this trap is still activated. It should be spent. It doesn't have more spears in the wall. Ingot will close it, just in case. (laughs) Um, Ingot, actually, since you guys are still in that room, uh, you can see that very, very slowly, some of the... so, So when the spears launched, there was this quick movement from the pulleys and like this puff of dust. And you can see that very, very slowly, some of the some of the, the ropes are starting to, to reset themselves. So Aww. you would guess that there is some kind of reset mechanism, but it's slow, it's Gross. not instantaneous. Wait, before you reset that, uh, Bling Blop, I think we know where the platform is. Can we not just step over it and then try to keep leading the kobolds into the trap over and over again, because they don't seem too bright. Ingot trusts your sword over remembering where that tile is, and he shuts okay. it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay. You, you, as soon as you do that, the, the resetting ropes, like, stop. So it is, it is firmly off. At this point, uh, the leader of the kobolds is starting to bark orders again, and very, very slowly, very, very hesitantly, one of the kobolds on in the southern portion of the room starts edging his way around the outside of the room, uh, further and further to the east, eyes peeled for any danger. He like passes right in front of Waverly's face as you're like peering through these holes. He's just shakily tiptoeing his way forward. Um, he looks like he's he's making his way to try to investigate what might be going on. Can one of you not just shoot magic through this little slot here with your finger? I don't know how magic works, so no. Yes. <laughs> In good, can. good. Can't shoot th- through the holes. <laughs> you can't. Why not? No. <laughs> oh. Does the magic come out of your fingies? No. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna raise my shield regardless. Okay. Uh, is it okay to do like if I draw my sword now, or do I have to wait till I'm in combat to do no, that? You have uh, you, you can you can draw a weapon right now. Okay. Right. Well, I think if we're gonna keep going on this mission, and it seems like these are the culprits to our mystery, then we have to go in there and confront them. Hmm. Yes, probably. Yes. All right. I shall light you away. Okay. Well, I think there's light in there, but you could, you feel free to leave at the door. You can lean it against the door on the way in, and then we oh. can, on the way out, get back if we need it again. Go get yes. it again. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to keep holding it. That wasn't like a. Uh, yeah. You can put it down. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is everyone ready? Yes. Let's go. Hey. At this point. So even though the kobolds are not quite certain where you are, but because that might change very quickly, we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. And if we, we're not trying to be sneaky, right? You can, I would definitely allow stealth if you want to, especially since you're not currently observed, but you don't have to. My perception's better anyway. I'll do stealth. (laughs) Well, All what right. I, if, I, <laughs> if I do stealth, I'm going to go first, probably, so I don't think it matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wave, really, okay. uh, what is your initiative? One. What was that? 21. 21 for Wave, really. Gristle? Uh, I was 18, so actually Wave, really beats me. Ingot? Ingot also got an 18. Oh, roll off. You guys are killing me. Yeah, go ahead and roll off. Two. Two! <gasps> no way! <laughs> uh, <laughs> roll off again. Four. 
16. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Weird. So ingot, then gristle. A lucky then day, Chris. 17. <laughs> All right. Waverly, you technically have the first couple of actions. Every, the board is set how it is. Uh, monsters will act on their turn in 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 rounds. Uh, so so keep that in mind as you're as you're watching their movements and, and deciding what you want to do. But technically, you are first to go. You have the first action this this round. I'm gonna hold and wait for Gristle to go first. You are gonna wait. At this point, um, the cobalt, the biggest burliest cobalt takes a couple of steps forward uh and if you guys will turn to roll 20 you'll notice that we actually have the map we have the map and tokens and everything we're doing it fancy like uh the kobold is going to take a use his action to stride forward definitely easily getting behind this pillar and you see he like bends down on the floor and starts uh starts doing something you can't quite tell what he's doing but it looks like he's he's got some kind of contraption that he's setting out uh and as he's getting through that process ingot it is your turn uh ingot is not going to wait and will promptly move forward uh through the allies uh, up to the door that we had opened right up like yeah uh, you, are you talking about the uh the door to this room all right with right. with uh, with 20 feet you can get to right there and then 25 feet so what's your speed so actually i should check that because i'm going to be using uh two actions to make my to the full yeah. move i want to sure. examine the, uh this right here sure so you use two actions to stride up to the door to this to this audience chamber mm -hmm. and uh, you want to examine the door you can make a seek action uh, okay using perception as your third action uh actually instead of that ingot is just okay. going to press up against the the door itself he doesn't know if he's helping or not but he's okay. blocking this door. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, it is now Gristle's turn. Question. You did say that the wall with the peepholes in it wasn't like super flimsy, but could I ostensibly kick through the wall if I really wanted to? <laughs> um, Power it seems attack. that somebody really wants to break through this wall. <laughs> I don't want to be the GM that just says no. So I'll tell you what. If you want to make an athletics check, the DC ain't easy, but you know what? Sometimes the dice amaze us. You can you can make an athletics check to try to burst through the wall. I do that thing. Guess so. All right. <laughs> make an athletics check. Ooh, that's a 13 plus 6. So that's a 19. Right. Okay. Uh, you like ram your whole body into the wall and bounce off of it because oh. it is solid stone. And does not buckle under your under your attempt. <clears throat> oh, oh, gosh, goodness! Uh, <laughs> just testing that this room is super safe. So I will add to glory, and then I move <laughs> move move my butt up. Um, I can't remember how you do the measuring thing, but can I move past uh uh ing ingot? Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, um, uh, it's very quick. It's very possible that you can move past ingot. You can move up to ingot. Um, the problem is that on the other side of ingot to the north, there's that door. So you would yes. have to open the door to get through that. But if you wanted to just stay right next to ingot, you could do that, which is a simple stride. Oh my god. Okay. Michelle does not want to. Doesn't is like don't do this thing. But Gristle is an idiot. I and do that. Ingot gets out of the way. <laughs> I I rush forward to glory and I kick open the door. <laughs> okay. Um, because you would have to, because, uh, because you can't really take a separate action to open the door because you oh. already used an action to try to burst through the wall. Okay. I'll say this. If you want to just kick through the door and burst in, I'll let you roll an athletics check to do that. Um, okay, where's Because I'm now? interested to see what would happen if I get that natural one that I'm hoping for. Oh, ah! <laughs> All right. This door is not going to hurt me. <laughs> Here we go. Athletics, all right? Whew, yep. That's uh, another, in... wait, it's, hold on. 16 plus, what did I say? Six. So that's 22? 22. You know what? I, I buy it. I buy yes. it. You basically <laughs> go charging around the corner at this door and just kick. A mighty <laughs> kick. Uh, the door flies open just as this kobold is about to reach out a trembling hand to like open it and peer through. And you burst out the other side and will end your movement just inside the room in front of this stunned kobold. However... 
that will be the end of your turn. Uh, you used one action to try to break through the wall and then two actions to burst through this door. Cool. Open the door. We'll You're welcome, right everyone. Door's open. You did it. You didn't <laughs> get into the room, though. Mm -hmm. Was that door uh, even locked or anything? It was just like... No, it was just, it was, it was just there. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Very cool. The, the it is your turn. Uh, I'd like to move over, like partially in the doorway area. Uh huh. And I cannot see the cobalt from here, correct? No, it's uh, you've got you've got some wall in your way that's blocking line of sight there. Am I able to hold an attack for when I see one in sight? So you can ready any action, but it costs two actions to ready an action. I'll do that. Um, basically, basically, you create your own reaction, which is like, when I see an enemy, I will attack it. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to do that, you have to use up two actions. Now, you only moved, and you do have two actions left. So you could say, if an enemy comes into my line of sight, I will shoot at it or throw a yep. dagger at it. That exactly. Let me do that. Fine. When an enemy comes in my line of sight, I'm going to fire my short bow. Okay. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, with allies, most likely in the way, it will get a bonus to its armor class, but it is totally possible to do that. No problem at all. That'll take us to uh, my little kobold minion's turn, and they do indeed. They see, they now see targets. Um, you hear this, like, sharp command from the leader kobold, and they all start rushing forward now. Spears outstretched one of them is going to take a full two actions to get right up next to and flanking gristle uh and then the kobold that is right ne that was already right next to gristle kind of waits for his companion to get into place and then gah, jabs forward both of them now flanking you so your armor class is reduced by two right now gristle right uh and this kobold is going to ooh, that is going to be a 25 to hit jesus ooh. god it, i'm a 16 now so all right, so that is a solid hit. And of course, they know how to fight in packs. You're going to take a little bit of sneak attack damage on top of the spear attack. Uh, that is a total of six points of piercing damage. Oh. He just ah, he gets you real good in the side. The kobold that rushed up next to you uh, to get into this flanking position does have one action left and is also going to attack and gets a two on the die. So he basically whiffs for his third action. But the important thing was that he got into place. <clears throat> would I have gotten an attack on that kobold since they literally you would have. passed me? You would have. You would have come visual? into your line of sight, and that would have triggered your reaction. So you can go ahead and roll and attack yourself. The... What was my full um, damage? Sorry, I couldn't hear the first number. Uh, six points. Six total. Okay. Thank you. Yep. It is a 14. Yes. 14 is a miss. Your arrow, no. uh, it goes, you're trying not to hit your companions who are in the way, and mm -hmm. you can't quite get a bead on this quick moving kobold, and uh, your arrow uh, misses all of them, thankfully, but unfortunately also your target. Got it. Uh, the third kobold, who is all the way in the back of the room, he is going to have to take two strides to get right next to, to Gristle, who is now blocked in uh, at this doorway, and it is just going to use his third action to try to stab, but he doesn't get this flanking bonus, so this is against your full armor class. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That is going to be 18 to hit. Uh, I'm, I'm at 18, so it does hit, right? All right, it does hit, but this isn't going to get sneak attack damage because, again, you're not you're not being flanked. So this is just going to be straight up three points of piercing damage cool. as this little kobold scampers up next to you and gah, jabs you with the spear. They all have acted... And that takes us to the top of the next round, Waverly. Are you able to pinpoint uh, where they pointed out where the trap mm. was in the middle of the room so that I can see it? Uh, you just saw that when they walked in towards the middle of the room that first time, it activated the trap, but you're not sure exactly, like, I, you, couldn't, you couldn't pinpoint an exact square that was like, oh, there's a dangerous one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to yell to everyone, Lure them to the center of the room, and I'll activate the trap. And so I'm going to stay here and basically ready the action of if they can get them to the middle of the room, I want to unlock the, or activate. Actually, the right. trap's already activated. I will, I will uh, basically... I can get, get turned get it off. Deactivated. Oh, yes. okay. So then I will activate it if they can lure them to the middle of the room. Okay. You are going to try to activate that trap, and now it is my turn once again. Uh, and this little kobold, the, the leader kobold, is going to move. He's going to take a stride to see if uh, he's going to stride twice across the room, scampering behind a far pillar, 
getting himself into a good vantage point. Um, he doesn't look like he's going to go rushing into the fray. Um, and he watches. He, he gets all the way over there. Uh, you're not quite certain what he does for his third action, but he disappears around the pillar in the far end of the room. That'll take us to Ingot's turn. Oh boy. Okay. So there's a lot happening and the combat is very close to Ingot. So Ingot's going to take <laughs> uh, one action to step back. So okay. he's going to move actually behind the for okay. the full thing. Uh, and then as he's moving for the next two actions, he's going to take out, it's the last like crystal magic that he has prepared. Um, but he's going to take it and uh, hold it up to his forehead. And it seems like there's some sort of transference happening into this stone. And he flings it over to the area uh, behind Gristle. And uh, Ingot casts Ghost Sound. Yeah. And this, sa- this auditory illusion is going to be of the traps going off. Uh, and it's going to sort of startle them or hopefully catch them off guard or maybe make them move. All right. All right. I will roll. I like it. I like the flavor. I'll roll a will (laughs) save uh, for each of them to see if they detect that it's just an illusion. Uh, What is your save, DC? Uh, 17, I think. 17. Uh, As this, as these loud, like, popping boom sounds uh, go off, the kobolds do look a little frightened. They all start, like, they look like they're about to dive for cover. I'll I'll use up one of their actions to have them dive for cover. I like what you did there. Thank Uh, you, Jim. Also recall, remember, um, for your cantrips, while you can only prepare a certain number of cantrips per day uh, of the ones that you know, you can then cast those cantrips as many times as you want. It's only your first and above uh, spell slots that actually get used up. So things like Ray of Frost or Acid Splash, you could cast those spells again and again. it's just that you only have a certain number of your cantrips that you have available to you for the day. Got it. Understood. Yeah. But a, still a solid use of, of Ghost Sound. I liked it. I liked the turn. Uh, and that takes us to Gristles next. You see these kobolds suddenly get tricked uh, by, by the sounds coming from behind them. They look like they're about to dive for cover, uh, giving you perhaps an opening. What do you do? Mm, first I yell, hey, guys, I heard a spooky sound. Are you sure there's not ghosts in here, too? <laughs> that was ingot sorry <laughs> oh cool cool um so what do i need to do to jump to go through them you said i have to do um i thought so I... if you want to strictly if you want to move directly through uh you would then make an athletics check uh however you can also take diagonal steps you can oh, okay. move diagonally on the board there's I... so you can actually move around them instead of through one of them interesting okay i will just go bloop right next to them still yep in combat, does that one dude get a opportunity attack or something, or is that just no? Uh, so, so most creatures, not all of them, but most don't just naturally have attacks okay. of opportunity, so you don't have to worry about that. And what you just did, when you only move five feet, uh, you are using an action to step, and when you just step, you don't trigger reactions. If you moved further, Ooh, okay. uh, you could trigger, but with just that, you wouldn't. Anyway. Oh, excellent! Um, great, great, great. I will. Uh, mm, my great sword is just super great, so I'm gonna slash at the one, uh, I guess against the wall, kind of live in south of me. Yeah, and... the one to the south. Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, and but I'm gonna call this. Yeah, I'm gonna power attack. Power attack. Please hit. Is there any other kind? <laughs> Ugh, that was an eight plus eight to so the sixteen. Sixteen is a hit. Yay! Yay! Yeah, good job. Okay. Okay. So that's 2d12. Ooh, nice. 10 plus 7 is 17 plus 3 is 20. Yeah, uh, you wind <laughs> up and and just crush your sword into this creature's body. Uh, it cuts deep into his abdomen, and the force of the blow like slams him back up against the wall, and he smacks his head against the stones. Uh, and when you rip the blade out, his guts just spill out onto the floor. He slips on them, falls prone, stops breathing, dies. And I scream, never you steal fish from Fisherman! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, goodness. (laughs) That's Uh, that's my turn. And so which one was that you attacking? Okay, was it the the one, like, not in the doorway? Correct. Yeah, I removed the token of the dead one, so he's dead now. Perfect. All right, after that impressive turn, Thee, it is now your turn, and you do have direct line of sight to one of these kobolds. I'll take my shot. All right, go ahead and take a shot. That is a 
18 to hit. That'll do it. All right. For six points of piercing damage. Six points of piercing damage. This one, already bleeding from a spear wound from that trap that you guys set, uh, goes down as your oh. arrow pierces through his chest, piercing one of his lungs. He just lets out a gurgling wail and dies. All right. And I'm going to then just take a side step to get out of the doorway. Gotcha. All right. Uh, you do technically have one action left if you can think of anything else that you want to do. Nah, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'm going to just let it ride. I have nothing else to do at that point, honestly. Makes sense. Uh, it is now the leader Kobold's turn. He does, like, he can't quite tell what he's doing. What's he doing back there? Why isn't he attacking? Uh, he does something oh, for his casting. whole turn. And that takes us to Waverly. That's bad. Yeah. I'm waiting for anyone to cross through the middle <laughs> that yep. isn't uh, one of my allies. Um, gotcha. And I'm going to trigger the, yeah, the trap. Gotcha. Uh, it is my kobold minion's turn. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he sees death approaching and he just charges. Uh, he, he, he First he like cowers thinking Aww. that the trap is going to go off. And then, a, like, a split second passes, and he realizes, oh, hold on a second, there, there was nothing there. So with his remaining two actions, he will step forward and try to stab Gristle. <laughs> uh, with an 18 on the die for a total oh, of 24. Hit. Oh, he gets you good. Four points of piercing damage. He gets you. But that was, unfortunately, his second and third action because he wasted one cowering, fearing the ghost sounds that w weren't even real. Haha. <laughs> Aha, uh <-huh>, indeed. <laughs> Ingot, it is now your turn. A uh, successful plan. Uh, <laughs> Ingot is going to rush up then as soon as that one is, has taken some more damage. Still mm -hmm. keeping some distance, but he's going to crack one of those uh, snow crystals again and Ray of Frost comes out. All right. Make a spell attack. That is a 24. One, oh, yeah, you got him good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ray of Frost is what damn? 2d8? 1d4 plus intelligence. Oh, nice. Eight. Eight cold Eight. damage. Damn. Uh, another Ray of Frost strikes this creature right in the back of the head. There's a bloom of frost as his brains freeze in his skull, uh, and he keels over dead. Uh, that takes care of all the little kobold minions. Uh, they're all gone. And the one the one that has been hanging back, you can't even really see him. Um, he's behind this, this this pillar to the north. You saw him go back there. You're not sure what he's doing back there, but it doesn't it gives you gives you a bad feeling, that's for sure. Uh, Gristle, it is your action. Uh, Gristle's feeling a little a little tired, a little, uh, <laughs> just probably need a nap or something. I'm hurting a little bit. <clears throat> um, so, hmm, what would Gristle do? What would Gristle, this should be a bracelet. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gristle's so stupid, I'm probably gonna die if I do this, but I would chase after the big bad boy. Um, let me see how far away he is. Oh, that's not it. Uh, oh, okay, it is, yeah, I can make it to the, I'm gonna rush to the big, the big guy. Okay. Oh God. You get up right next to him, and Amazing. as you step into the space next to him, you hear this ka-ching, and these, this, this spiked like mouth erupts from the tiles beneath your feet and tries to clamp around your leg. I do oh, need you to make a reflex save. Oh, buddy. Um, oh, reflex. I've never rolled that before. Uh -oh. Where is that? Reflex, reflex. Where's reflex on the- Under machine? saving uh, throws? Saving uh, throws? Oh, you okay. Yes. Attitude, will, and reflex. Yes, I see now. Um, okay. That is a plus. Oh my god. Uh, that's a three plus six, so it's a nine. <laughs> a nine. Well, the good news is that it wasn't a critical failure because you would have taken double damage. Mm -hmm. The problem is it is a regular failure, and you're going to take full regular damage, which is twelve points <gasps> of piercing damage. As well, down. These, this spiked mouth just like clamps around your thigh. Blood goes spurting everywhere. Oh, oh god. Uh, it wasn't super glorious. Oh, get him. Oh, pass out. No. Uh, you drop to zero, go unconscious, and mm -hmm. you are dying one. Okay. It's okay. I have uh, Die Hard as an ability, which is not the movie, but I 
I only really died. I only really died five instead of four. Ooh. I'm... So you're so basically you're invincible. So no no worry at all. I just be uh, sleepy for a little bit though. I will take a small nap. <laughs> it's just nap time for Gristle. That's all. <laughs> nap time for Gristle. <laughs> Go get the... it. Fee, it is your turn now. Uh, you see your friend go down as this as this cleverly set trap just springs up and clamps down around her thigh. Blood goes everywhere. Uh, you hear this little victory yip coming from somewhere in the room uh, ahead of you. What do you do? Uh, I'm gonna step into the room, see this little bit of chaos, make my way to this corner. Do I have line of sight? at this creature from uh, at the this corner? point yes i would say that the pillar is going to give that kobold some cover from there but you can see him that's fun uh, and then i'll take my first shot my short all bar. right go ahead say 17. 17 is a miss your Ooh. your arrow cracks into the stone of the pillar all right uh and i'll take my second one just hey why not, why not? Crit fishing yep yep Ugh, that's a shame um and it's a minus five, so that's a 21. <gasps> wow, uh, on a second shot, that's actually really good. Uh, and it is a hit. Uh, your second arrow actually finds its mark. Go ahead and roll damage. All right, so that is one. Oh. All right, <laughs> all right. Uh, I feel like you just sort of like ricocheted off the pillar a little bit and barely managed to find your mark and graze this thing as it's gloating over Gristle's I have a quick Jimmy rules corpse. question. This is more for yes. Xander than Ingot, but is there a mechanic of like spell casting and concentration as if this person we thought might be casting a spell if gets attacked or hurt it breaks their concentration or casting? Right. So uh, not really. Uh, oh, okay. So So if you're going to sustain a spell, uh, there will be like the sustain mechanic, which allows you to use uh, up actions right. to keep a spell going. But taking damage doesn't really disrupt that. If somebody say had the attack of opportunity reaction, and as some as you're casting a spell, you take damage uh, from a reaction or something like that, that can disrupt uh -huh. uh, your casting. But but otherwise, no, it would not. Um, and it doesn't look like. Uh, from what you're seeing, it doesn't look like he's actually cast any spells. Uh, you Copy. haven't noticed the telltale signs of magic in the room yet, uh, just so you know that. Um, but uh, after Thee's turn, uh, it is the top of the next round, and it's Waverly's turn. Uh, I see Gristle go down, and so oh, I'm yes. going to go rushing in there. But I move very slowly, yeah. so... Um, I'm going to move, uh, I guess I'll take two move actions. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, so I can go 50 feet with two actions. Ooh, I don't want to be okay. that close. Um, yeah, I will go up to the corner sort of, of, of this dark area here. Okay. And my third action, I'd like to raise my shield. Okay, so you rush into the room, raise your shield, trying to get yourself closer to Gristle. Hopefully, you can help her before she bleeds out all over the stones. <laughs> that takes us to our little friend Kobold's turn. He sees a new target present itself. He is going to step forward and swing right at you. Uh, this is a, a short sword, actually. Where all the rest of them were carrying spears, this guy's got a little short sword in his hand. He steps forward and just comes swinging for your knees. <laughs> you have your shield up, so remember to increase your armor class for that. Yeah. And that is going to miss. That is going to miss easily uh, oh. with a 10 total. So he comes in swinging, clangs right off your shield. Uh, I will go ahead and make one more attack. Short swords are agile, just like daggers. So this is going to be at a minus four penalty. That second strike, just as awful. Uh, even worse, even. So he uh, maybe he got a little overconfident after watching Gristle go down, and he just charges out and starts swinging wildly. But you easily just pl clang, clang, block both attacks. Nice. That takes us to Ingot's turn. Yeah, seeing that and Gristle going down, Ingot's also going to rush forward. Well, rush for Ingot. Uh, he's gonna move, take one action to move. Uh, let's see, that's five, 10, 50, to the 20. Okay. Uh, 
And then 5, 10, 15, he's going to cast uh, an acid splash again. So he's going to take that same stone that uh, he had drawn out before and draw this energy out, almost like he's pulling this liquid from his body and an acid splash comes out of his hands. Nice. So he's going to roll. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 19 plus uh, uh, 23. Yep, that does it. <laughs> nice. That doesn't happen. No, he has a high AC, right? It's not a crit. Yeah, it, it, it hits him. It's not a critical hit, though. Gotcha. So that's 1d6. Six. Uh -huh. Nice. Uh, plus one. So seven total. Acid damage. All right. This gob of sizzling acid splatters against his shoulder. You can see screams of pain scrapes it off real quick. Uh, suddenly not feeling quite as confident as he was a moment ago. Uh, and that takes us to the uh, Ingot's, or sorry, that, that was Ingot's turn. Takes us to Gristle's turn. And Gristle, you get to do a very important action, which is roll a dying check. These are flat checks, and the DC of your check uh, is going to be 10 plus your dying value. Currently, you're at dying one, so that means 10 plus one means 11. A flat check means it needs to be 11 on the die or higher. There are no bonuses or modifiers or anything else. You're just what, what you roll on the die. Okay. If you roll under your target, then you will go to dying two. If you roll equal to or above, then you'll just stabilize. 14. Yay. 14. That's good. So you stop bleeding. Uh, the wound clots. Uh, you are you are okay. Now, until you get brought above zero hit points, you're still unconscious, unfortunately. But theoretically, you won't die. No, I'm really uh, unless just somebody having. deals more damage to you. If you take oh. any more damage okay. from any source, you'll begin dying again. Okay. Cool. All right, Fee. I'm gonna take my first shot. All right. That's a 22. Yes. Yep. 22 does it. 22 for one damage. <laughs> okay, All right. We'll take it. We'll take, take it. Take a bling, second, bling, bling. <laughs> second shot. Uh, penalty, that's a 19. Uh, that, yep, that's a hit. For four damage that time. Hey, there we go. A more solid hit. So you're just grazing him with arrows left and right, and then you get one solid hit in his side. Yeah. You do have one action left. Uh, I'm actually going to move behind this pillar. Yeah, get some cover. Uh, excellent use of your turn. Fire twice and move. That takes us to the top of the next round, and Waverly, it is your turn. Waverly did that thing where she didn't see the bad guy and just kind of went running in, then saw the bad guy and was like, ah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh, uh, I'm definitely going to back up uh, away from this guy and sort of just away from him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just away. Just away. <laughs> Not there anymore. <laughs> and continue to have my shield raised. Uh, and uh, for my third action, I will... Uh, I only have daze. I will attempt to daze him. Hey. Okay. Days is a fine spell to use. Okay, I will roll a will, will save. save. Uh, that is only an eight. <laughs> oh, oh, this is good. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, you're actually going to be stunned one. Okay. Wait, if, if it was a critical failure. Uh, okay, yeah. So, so what's your spell DC? Fifteen. Okay, so that's not a critical failure, but it is a failure. So I take full damage. Okay. Uh, one second. Um, Which would just be your spellcasting right. modifier. Just, yeah. So, four points. So, so there is another burst of silvery fire around this creature's uh, uh, head, and it just uh, seems to be quite, quite in a pickle. That's actually a good point. I'm only only because I'm noticing this, and I actually think you may be cheating yourself out of some some bonuses. Um, your wisdom modifier is four, correct? Yeah. Yeah. You should be trained in your spell DCs, which means it would be three mm -hmm. plus four. So you seven. do get a proficiency bonus for your spell DCs, just like your spell the attacks. Sheet, the sheet says that it's my proficiency plus intelligence. Yeah, and you are 
Well, it should be wisdom. That has, uh, that's 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 because your spellcasting modifier as a cleric is wisdom. Oh. So anything that's spellcasting related should be wisdom based. Oh. That is that is an incorrect thing on your sheet. Okay. Well, that changes a lot of things for me. Hm? Yeah. Um, your spellcasting wondering... modifier. Your spellcasting is always reliant on wisdom. Cool. So my spell DC is a seventeen. Seventeen. There it so is. So I still didn't critically fail, but just remember that in the future that it's it's a little bit better for you. I was wondering how Xander had such a high spell DC. Right. I was like, God, yeah. I'm so jealous. Mine's a fifteen. <laughs> now he does that. rely on as a wizard, he does rely on intelligence. Uh, but that's because he's he's using a different type of magic than you. So yeah, your stuff is wisdom based. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> That was actually Elf Tiro who who pointed that out, Thank and you. I was like, "Oh, that's that's right." So yeah. so good job out there. Yeah, my sheet just uh, said keeping us honest. So I just put in. Nope. Hey, I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, no worries. No worries at all. Uh, still, a excellent use of your turn. Uh, it is now this creature's turn. It is a little dazed, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, it shakes off the effects. He's looking really badly wounded. Um, but now he sees that his friends are dead and he's fighting for his life. Uh, oh. Even though his his confidence is gone after luring Gristle into a trap, uh, he now has just full panic mode and charges in at Ingot and begins laying mm -hmm. into him with his blade. Ingot, that is going to be a 20 to hit. Oh, that will hit <laughs> Ingot. Oh, yes. This short sword comes in, stabbing oh. deep. You're going to take four points of slashing damage as he cuts you across the chest. Uh, and then he is going to take a stride towards the staircase. You guys see that there is a, a big staircase leading down into darkness uh, as he begins to flee can you stop him, Ingot? It is your turn. So Ingot uh, is has been terrified. He's been wounded, but his faith in his friends have healed him up to he's never felt better. So as the sword came through towards him, he saw the flash of getting wounded before, and he took it, and it's it's just a graze across the chest. And you can see him look down and look at his hands, and then you can notice that he's sort of laughing, and you. You hear a ha 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 ha, and he casts Ray of Frost again. Uh, All that's right. a range of 120 feet. Yeah, uh, that beats. You get him. <laughs> that. A little spell so, attack. 16 plus 7 is 23. Yeah. Uh, you notice that as this creature is scampering away from you, he seems to be moving incredibly nimbly, almost as if he has a, a certain ability that gives him a bonus to his armor class. But mm -hmm. even with that extra bonus, even with that extra burst of speed and nimbleness, you'll manage to find your mark and the Ray of Frost hits true. Yes, I got a four. So eight cold damage. <laughs> oh, your Ray of Frost That's is a, Every cool. time I've gotten a four on this D4, this is my permanent D4 forever. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you blast this guy in the back as he's fleeing for the staircase. Uh, he stumbles, nearly tipping over, no. uh, but is still limping along. It looks like he's got just a little bit of fight left in him. You do technically have one action left. Uh, do I have anything? No, everything is two actions. Yeah, I, I guess I will stay at the ready. Uh, I have okay. a cantrip of shield that is one, and if it looks like we're going to get attacked again, gotcha. I'll start casting my shield. Gotcha. That leaves it all up to Fee. So can I see him from where I'm standing currently? Yeah, you still have a line of sight to him. Uh, he's right. right in the middle of the room, so that pillar isn't blocking your way at all. I'll take my first shot. All right. Take 23 to hit. Oof. Oh, yeah, that gets him. Roll higher than one. Or a two. <laughs> oh, Yay! <laughs> two points of damage. Um, second attack. That's an 18. An 18 is a miss. No. Barely. As he's scrambling forward, like he, he stumbles, and then you shoot just before he gets back to, to being fully st stood up. Oh, well, we'll do this. it, do Why it, not? do it. Nothing lost. Uh, that's a 13 total. Uh -oh. A 13 is going to miss. Yeah. Two, uh, you're, you're, maybe you got a little over eager, hoping you could take this guy down, and your shots go wide after that first one. Waverly, it looks like it's all up to you. 
Uh, no, I'm going to rush over to Grissel. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to attempt uh, to start my medicine checks. Okay. Um, I know that takes uh, like 10 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. So so that that's something that you would be at for a long, long time. Um, yeah. I got a, a 19 on the first roll, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. So that kind of takes you uh, into what you're doing. It is now this creature's turn, and he, in a, in a full panic, uh, bleeding everywhere, a huge bloom of frostbite on the back of his head is just going to rush for the stairs and begin descending down. Uh, and by the end of his third action, he has disappeared mm. down below, leaving you all safely, sort of, the end of this first level of these ruins. Gristle lies nearly dead at Waverly's feet. But like fine, but like, she is... like snoring a little bit also. <laughs> <laughs> and she is frantically uh, doing everything she can to stop the bleeding and save her friend's life. But whether she is successful or not is something that we will have to explore in our next episode because well... tonight we have reached the end of things and we are done for this one. It's weird because episode three is just called Gristle Dies. Hey! So who knows what yeah, that's the first note in the- Don't look at the IMDb. <laughs> uh, Gristle appearing in two episodes. Yeah. I'm just off the cast list after this season. It almost happened to both of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I thought it was going to be so me yeah. too, but he missed. True. So Level things one. have definitely gotten a little bit tougher, but you guys have powered through. Uh, and and done fairly well for yourselves, uh, but adventuring's dangerous, and stumbling into that trap was was no good. I mean, you you did get the jump on some creatures, which was good. Uh, perhaps you've you've learned a little bit about about some tactics moving forward, or maybe not. Maybe maybe you did everything right, and that's 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 good too. Either way, it was a lot of fun. So you know, it was a good time. All right, everybody. Uh, that is going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank Paizo for having us and for creating such a cool tool for people to looking to get into Pathfinder. If you want to start your own adventures, you just head over to paizo.com, grab yourself a Pathfinder beginner box. That is the very adventure that we are playing. It is super easy to get into, and I highly recommend it. Uh, and of course, we're all in a socially distanced world right now. It's easier than ever to play Pathfinder virtually on Roll20.net. And the good news there is that the Pathfinder Beginner Box is already available on their marketplace. It's preloaded, set up, and ready to play as soon as you log in with friends wherever they are. So that is what you saw us using tonight. Uh, again, tools that I highly recommend. Uh, we are going to be back here next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific to explore deeper levels of the cobalt-infested ruins beneath Otari. But between now and then, there is more exciting actual play content on the Dragons and Things Network. Just follow at the DAT Network, that's the D-A-T Network on socials, and here on Twitch for the full schedule, which includes Pathfinder and Starfinder content. Until then, I want all of you to have a very safe and happy Thanksgiving. We're going to see you here next week, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific for more troubles in Otari. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.